It's time to wake up and let the weirdness begin. It's the KBJ Show. To start your morning. Kevin uh-huh. is the host. And his skin pigment is whiter than Casper the Ghost. Virginia. <laughs> Sounds like this. Nickname Vicious is speed. So don't get her pissed. This is Jason. Call so you spend. And he loves to talk about Bigfoot and Stats. Bro. So get ready. Here we go. You're listening to 97.9 with the KBJ Show. Well, here we go. Welcome to the KBJ Show. Happy Thursday. What the heck is going on, everybody? Yeah, Thursday. Yeah, here we go. Friday Eve. That's right, it is. (laughs) That's right, it is. Big old weekend. Bigfoot Fest this weekend. Big weekend. Yeah, big weekend. Very excited for that. I'm not sure if you can tell I'm ready. I have my Bigfoot shirt on, my Bigfoot hat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Getting all my Bigfoot stuff out. Yeah. And uh, good news uh, coming up today. There's uh, actually a big old story that uh, there's some Bigfoot audio coming out of Ohio, not far from where you're going to be for the Bigfoot Festival. Oh, my gosh. It's, the timing. It's yeah. almost as if yeah. Sasquatch is is listening yes. to everything. Yes, saying, I'm going to put out the call. It's almost like Bigfoot has put out the call for Bird to come and find him. Turns it, out he's PR savvy. Yeah, he's very PR savvy. Very yes. PR savvy. I saw, I saw this article everywhere today. <laughs> it is. It is everywhere today. So we get to it. We got audio to go with it. So we got a ton of really important things that we have to get to here today on the KBJ Show. What are you thinking about? What, what are you thinking about? What's on your mind? What are you thinking about? What, what are you thinking about? What are you thinking about today, Jay Bird? Well, I don't have to tell you this, Fat Kevin, but it's National Chocolate Chip Day today. Yes, National Chocolate Chip Cookie, cookie Day. Cookie Day. Yeah. Yes. Was, Just the chip? I always leave a cookie. Notice that? Girls, you, it's Girl a Scout problem. cookies. I say Girl Scouts. You always say go- you want to eat Girl Scouts. Yeah, I always leave out <laughs> yeah. cookie. And it's very alarming every time you say it. And it's the most important part of the statement. Very important. When you're saying Girl Scout, you want to make sure you work cookie in there when you're talking about eating. Today is National <laughs> Chocolate Chip Cookie, cookie Day. Day. Yes. And I <laughs> wanted to get y'all's opinion and the uh, KVJ Nation. I did my top three. I didn't want to do a top five. And the reason why I didn't do a top five was because that, that four and five spot, I don't know who it, who it belongs to. I want people to remind me, where are the good chocolate chip cookies in the restaurants? Because here, here's my top three. I got Subway at number three. Okay. Jersey Mike's coming in at number two. And mm-hmm. then the best chocolate chip cookie I've ever had are those Double Tree cookies. From the the hotel, the, they yeah. make their own cookies. Oh, yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, those are the best and tastiest chocolate chip cookies. But I do want to fill in that four and a five spot. Is it a Panera? Is it a Starbucks? Mm-hmm. Is it you know? Is it? I'm seeing a lot of people talk about McDonald's chocolate chip cookie. I don't know if I've had their cookie, their chocolate chip McDonald's. I did want to. I was a kid. I remember you had two different options of cookies that you could get. You had either kind of like what were the animal crackers, or they had the small little chocolate chip cookies, and they were hard, kind of like a Chips Ahoy. And I was not a fan of those. And this is in my prime fat kid days. They uh, they did make their own cookie, and it is listed on some of some of these lists. But I I can't recall the McDonald's. I'm trying to figure out if someone was doing a puff piece for McDonald's in this article I wrote. Yeah. Or does McDonald's no, that, really have a good chocolate no, chip that cookie? No, that doesn't. That doesn't feel right. It doesn't I mean, feel like, right. maybe they've done a whole new cookie it's it's been um, we're 30 years removed from having mcdonald's cookies so people are saying um they're saying Publix. i i like Publix a lot they're yeah. not my favorite I, I do like them a lot though there's a brand of cookie that a lot of people use it's called david's okay and so i had that restaurant depot membership and i bought a case of frozen david's cookies so they're frozen and all you do is you put them in the oven oven and they are delicious panda was <laughs> mm-hmm. just asking me the other night he's like when are you going to get some more of those david's chocolate chip cookies okay i've never had them and maybe i have and i can't remember you might have had them at a restaurant or at a, a place and you thought they were made by that company but they're actually made by a company called david's see this is mm. exactly why i brought it up because the good people are giving me great answers i forgot about cr chicks does have a good cookie they got a really okay. good cookie. All right. Thank you for that That's reminder. Important. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Kentucky John in our chat room. McDonald's has a damn good soft cookie right now. Oh, they have a soft one. Okay, <laughs> yeah. so it's brand new. 
Right. <laughs> For me, at least. <laughs> Thank you to the good people. It's a big day. It's a big day. Well, I, I want to know. <laughs> okay. What you got in your mind today, Virginia? Well, a couple of days ago, you know how much I'm a fan of uh, Tyler Cameron. Oh, yeah. From that show, The Bachelorette on ABC. Uh, he's a local guy, a Jupiter guy, and he's doing all kinds of fun projects. But he texted me a couple of days ago, and he's like, hey, I'm doing this charity gala in my mother's honor. His mother passed away. And it's a scholarship fund for for kids to be able to pursue college and so he's going to be doing a gala he's going to be doing a golf tournament coming up in september he's actually coming here to talk to us on the radio today at 9 30 but uh, i told mags i'm like hey he's coming to dinner we had this dinner last night at evo and mags was like oh can i come please 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 i'm like absolutely so uh, i sat mags right next to tyler at the dinner last night and then uh, after he left she's like looks at me and goes mom I think I'm in love. <laughs> oh, how cute. And huh? I was just thinking back to when I was a teenage girl. Yeah. You know, I loved Ricky Schroeder. How amazing would it have been if I would have been able to sit at a dinner next to Ricky Schroeder? Oh, uh, yeah. How great would it be if you could sit next to him now? Uh, <laughs> uh, now? Uh, I, don't, I don't see y'all getting along. I don't see us getting along either. He's a little bit too lippy now. But back in the day, I mean, imagine you're a teenage girl sitting next to this heartthrob from TV. Like, that's a pretty cool experience. Ricky Schroeder was yours. I loved Punky Brewster okay. growing up. Who was yours, Kev? It was on Who's the Boss? Alyssa, Alyssa Milano. Milano. Alyssa Milano. Yeah, everyone liked her, too. Yeah. And then you got to meet her in an elevator. I did, yeah. I was mm -hmm. there. Yeah, I didn't say a word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was just like, oh, that's pretty awesome, man. Oh, uh, I'm so scared. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I got on my mind here today is I think for a lot of people, they're kind of freaking out. And I get it. Business is business. Media is changing. Viewing habits have changed. But for a lot of people, uh, this was a big thing that they grew up with. This is passed down from generations. And as a small kid, elementary school, I remember being connected to days of our lives because my mom watched it. Her and a neighbor lady were always into it, and they're talking about the storylines that went on and they, they were so ridiculous all i remember is when i was a kid in the 80s uh tony uh he had an evil twin and the <laughs> one tony had been kidnapped and it was the evil tony that was living out his life and they couldn't figure out why he was such a villain now they did that on santa barbara as well y yeah it's a popular <laughs> you know soap opera storyline is the evil twin and i still remember that you know as a kid and so today some people are really kind of freaking out because it's the end of an era now days of our lives is not going away but starting September 12th, for the first time in almost 60 years, five decades, it will not be seen on NBC. They are moving Days of Our Lives to Peacock, which is their streaming network. And some people are just like, what? You can't? This is... And, Change? Hey, yeah. Yes, you know, they can. Because it just was <laughs> always there. You would turn it on and it was just a part of your life. And the amazing thing about soap operas, and the odd thing for me, I remember probably 20 years after I had watched it in the mid-90s, I was living in California and I turned it on. I didn't have anything to do in the afternoons because of my hours. And I got hooked on Days of Our Lives again. <laughs> And a lot was, of the same characters were still there. It was 20 years later, and I picked right back up and knew everything in a week. I'm like, <laughs> how is it that 20 years have gone by that I've seen this show, and in one week I know everything that's happened in the last two decades? As a little kid, and I believe it was Patch on Days of Your Life. Patch was, yeah. I, as a kid, I was just fascinated by that guy. He had apparently kidnapped whomever, Kayla, I think it was. It was Patch and Kayla. Gosh, it's been... 30, 40 years since I've seen that. I still remember Patch and Kayla. They had a love story, but he had kidnapped her, so Patch looked like the bad guy because he just wore an eye patch. <laughs> you, can't, <laughs> you can't trust a guy in an eye patch, right? Why did he have He's an eye patch? Light. Was it no eye there? I, the, you know, I don't think they ever even revealed it, but it was just <laughs> something to make his character edgy. He kind of had, okay. had a mullet. And, and an, I think he had long hair. And an yeah. eye patch. Yeah. I, as a kid, thought it was the coolest thing. Oh, man. He's, He's very pirate-like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Patch and Kayla. That's uh, what that was. So uh, it's going to be going away. It's been on NBC since November 8th of 1965. So that'll let you know just as the generations have grown up and something that they passed on. You can still pass it on, but you got to show Grandma how to dial up the Peacock Network. I don't watch a Peacock. <laughs> I don't see it going well. It may not go well.
So crazy thing about it was they realized the nostalgia that goes with it. And if you did not know, Peacock has already launched a spinoff called Days of Our Lives Beyond Salem. It started in September of 2021, and it focuses on a lot of the old school characters. Uh, you had uh, Bo, you know, Christian Alfonso and Peter Reckel. He played uh, Bo and what was she? Bo and I can't remember what her name was, but they were another big couple. So they, oh, that's right. It was Hope. Hope, Hope. and Bo. Hope and Bo Brady. So they were staples when I was a kid back in the 80s. And they kind of moved them onto, if you wanted to see the old classics, move Grandma on over to Days of Our Lives Beyond Salem. So they're going to have, you know, a couple of spinoffs, but just really kind of amazing. In 2020, Days of Our Lives celebrated its 14,000th episode. NBC's longest running series and Jennifer Aniston's dad I don't know if you know he has been on the show since like the 80s he got a lifetime achievement award oh wow and uh, he has been uh, Victor Kiriakis is his he's character Victor name. yeah that's Jennifer I know, Aniston I know John Victor. Aniston I think's his name and yeah he's been on that show forever that's Jennifer Aniston's dad I, I'm not as well versed as a Kevin Ralston but I, I do know some of these characters my mom <laughs> loves soap operas yeah and, and a lot of you probably did it was you know probably just something your mom or your grandma or your great grandma watched and so you know it's just one of those things where it is really a big viewing staple Th there's certain moments i remember stand out as a kid uh luke and laura i think laura died that was general hospital general hospital yeah. but <laughs> my mom watched all of them yeah Th there was a uh, one on santa barbara where uh, eden got shot that was a big deal yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah but there are all these interesting little storylines general hospital is another one. my wife had uh, grown up watching that so we got into general hospital for a while and uh watch that but it, the, the thing that's amazing about about is a lot of those uh, characters they stay on for decades so that's what's it's really their gig yeah and yeah i mean why not if you can marry a tv show like that what other show because you know most shows get canceled within a year to five years maybe if you have a great run you're 10 or 15 years i mean you know what you know tv show is on for 50 or 60 years Every day. Yeah, every day. What a stable <laughs> gig that is. And, and I've heard it's tough memorizing lines, and it is kind of a grueling line of work, but it's consistent. A lot of ego in there. I mean, it's yeah. it, it's 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 competitive. But they've got their own little genre. They'll do kind of like you have the comic cons. They'll do a soap con, and they'll have these conventions with soap opera stars. And, oh, my gosh, the old cougs are going crazy. There's a movie kind of based on the whole soap opera world called Soap Dish. It's with uh, Sally Field. Okay. And, it, and it shows kind of how people look at soap opera people, not as real people, but as their character. Because there's reports of soap opera actors going into the grocery store and people yelling at them as if they were their <laughs> character. Sure, how yeah. How dare you cheat on Victor? Right. <laughs> you do. You get, you get really invested in it. So, you know, there's a lot of people today that are, you know, kind of freaking out about it. They just don't like any kind of change. Days of Our Lives is not necessarily going anywhere. It's just moving over to the digital world. You kind of got me wanting to go on a deep, deep dive on uh, some of these soap operas now. <laughs> yeah, you could do it. There's, what, 140,000 episodes to check yeah. out. <laughs> so if you want to start some binge watching, it might take you a while. Well, as uh, Jay Bird had mentioned, today is National Chocolate Chip Cookie Day today. And uh, people were talking about their favorites. A couple shout-outs for Subway. The McDonald's new soft cookie, like you had said. Chili's, somebody said. Ooh. They've got their chocolate chip cookie skillet. Ooh. <laughs> right? I like, those, that, I like huh? those words put together. Oh, man. Uh, you know how to talk dirty to this guy. Well, uh, Bigfoot, we went on a camping trip. He made me campfire grilled cheeses out of a skillet, and it just was, I don't know, the way it looked, the way it smelled. Some skillet is love. It's next level. Yeah, something about it. Uh, also, shout out for the Costco cookies. Nature's Way Cafe in Lake Park, they say, is a really great chocolate chip cookie. You know, I like Nature's Way Cafe a lot. I always forget mm -hmm. to go there, but they got good food. Somebody else saying Wawa is amazing as well. Oh, all right. Thank you. Try that out. So if you're looking for a chocolate chip cookie today. I love the passion. A couple ideas. They say that the uh, chocolate chip cookie is America's favorite cookie. It's my favorite. Any idea what else would be in the top five? You had to guess. Oatmeal. Gonna go oatmeal. That is oatmeal raisins number four. Sugar. 
Sugar. You, nope. have to, you have to say it like that, though, okay? Sugar. Sugar. <laughs> I love a sugar cookie. Sugar cookies are good. Publix does that. They have the one sleeve of uh, chocolate chip cookies, and then they have the sugar. Sugar. <laughs> yeah, sugar did not uh, make the top five. Peanut butter. Peanut butter's number two. Okay. Junior. Very good. The only thing about peanut butter is not every peanut butter cookie is created equal. There's, there's, so, there's an ingredient they use in some peanut butter cookies that it makes the cookie taste fake. It, mm. it, you can tell it's got it's littered with caramel. Yes. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, number five is the shortbread cookie. And I'm surprised by this, but America's third favorite cookie is the double chocolate chip. But could you argue that double chocolate chip is better than regular chocolate chip? I hate that that, that they put that on the list. That's that's stupid. I feel Just like keep it, it is as too. chocolate chip. Yeah. It's chocolate chip. Feels like it's taking up two spots that it shouldn't. And for You're the right. most part, I always was a kid that yeah, if you could double up on the chocolate, why not? Why would you not? It's a it's a, it's still chocolate chip. I hate that they did that. What I really liked as a fat kid was not the chocolate chip. It was called a chocolate chunk cookie. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. I know what you're talking about. You are what you eat, Ralston. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they sell them in the store, but those those are the package ones. <laughs> yeah, they find that uh, the average American eats 21 cookies a month. That number seems very low. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> I was thinking it was high. Yeah. <laughs> high? 21 cookies in a month? Yeah, what am month. I, five years old? I'm a man over here. I gotta. Obviously, some of us are higher end on the scale. Me, who hasn't had a cookie in decades, <laughs> we go on other ends of it. You're, you're, you're right. making up for my slack. <laughs> I, I guess I am. And that's how we average out to 21. You are quite literally the odd couple. Do yeah. you think that, how many cookies do you think you eat a year then? I might eat five a year. That, so you eat zero a year. Zero, you eat five. five a year. And you're saying 21 a month is way too low. Well, Kevin, 21 you get in a package most times. <laughs> and look, man, I'm not a quitter. I like to finish my game. I yeah. sit down and I kill the thing of Oreos. They are. <laughs> they are they're very easy to kill the whole sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what do you think? Is Disney headed in the wrong direction? I was reading an article yesterday from somebody that is an old school, diehard Disney fan writing about their complaints in the direction that the company is headed. Now, here's what they had to say. They say if you go back to the creator of Disney World, Walt Disney, he and his brother Roy were the ones that were the visionaries. But even Roy, when they opened up Disney World in Orlando, Walt was already dead. He had died about seven years before. Oh, damn. I don't think I knew that. Didn't even make it to it. Yeah. It's so weird. I just, yesterday, for some reason, I watched a, a like a seven-minute documentary about someone going, is Disney going the wrong way? And they, they went over the whole brother thing. And Yeah. yeah it's, be, I didn't know that because either. Because people Virginia. are really kind of throwing this out. And I think what you're having, it's kind of like we were talking about with the days of our lives. You've got the old school fans that are upset that they're moving it to Peacock, and you do have some old school Disney fans who are saying, you've been making a lot of changes here over the last 10 years, and you could even argue over the last two, and we don't like the way you're going, and if Walt were here, he would definitely protest where his theme park and his company is going. This is the argument they make. Now, I'm not a diehard, so I'd love to get people's thoughts on this. Is Disney headed in the wrong direction? And here were the arguments that they make. Number one, Walt Disney never intended his parks to be exclusive. It was supposed to be all-inclusive family fun <laughs> for the average family. And you laugh. Why are you laughing, Virginia? Because I just went to Disney, yeah. and it is not inclusive, right. and it is very expensive. Yep. And that mouse bent me over. Yes. <laughs> that is her number one complaint, saying Walt would never price families out of going to the theme park. It was supposed to be where everyone could go with their families and have good, clean, fun. I don't, I was looking at some of these families and they have like four and five kids and I was like, 
how do they do it? Yeah. Because each ticket is over a hundred bucks. Right. You got to pay extra and make reservations on this Genie Plus. That's sixty bucks a ticket. Like what? And their merch. Their merch is not cheap. Yeah, and that's what they're saying. Everything from tickets, experiences, dining, resort stays, it all is becoming a rich man's game. And if you see someone at any of those resorts, you realize they're upper middle income, most likely, because of the money it takes. And when you find out that 61% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck, that paycheck usually doesn't include a trip to Disney. So now already you're only talking about maybe... 39% of Americans can actually even afford a Disney vacation right now. That's not according to Walt's vision. That's it, not inclusive. It was not made for just 39% of the American population. That is their number one argument about Disney going in the wrong direction. They also said that, you know, Walt always wanted things to be family friendly. And until just a few years ago, alcohol was not sold at Walt Disney World. Not no mo. Today, <laughs> you can get it at every theme park. Magic Kingdom, Disney's Hollywood Studios, Disney's Animal Kingdom, Epcot, all has alcohol. In fact, you'd argue a lot of reasons why people go to Epcot is because of the booze. There is kiosks now with Grey Goose on tap. Yeah. Everywhere. I could mm -hmm. not believe it. I'm like, wait, this is the same park that didn't have alcohol anywhere except Epcot. Yeah. And now you could not take three steps without seeing uh, White Claw. <laughs> well, right. Maybe that's why the mouse bent you over. Full bars. Well, and this one person says, and they don't like this, they said, maybe this isn't a coincidence that you saw a massive family brawl in the Magic Kingdom that went viral in late July. Remember that fight oh, we yeah. talked about? They said this is one of the reasons why they weren't serving alcohol because they didn't want these kind of scenes happening at their park. Their park was supposed to be different. I always thought vodka on tap just led to <laughs> fights with other people. <laughs> <laughs> what could go wrong? I mean, vodka on tap. Vodka on tap. I was oh like, my. is that a Grey Goose tap? Look, I love it, but I'm a single guy, and I, I don't. I'm not. I'm not going to Disney for the family experience. I'm, I'm going there right. to have a good time. Yeah, I, 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 I'm with you, and I've got to remove myself because a lot of these things. I'm like, yeah, they're making it more for me, but I. I don't know that Disney was made for me. Sure. And that's the argument that this woman is making is she said what Disney was family fun that was affordable and pure. It's dying on the vine. Walt Disney would be losing his mind if he were alive today and he could see where they are taking his company. And it goes on in this article to say that's not just it. The alcohol at Disney Springs at the Edison restaurant. You have to be 21 oh, and older. I ate there. It was really good. Okay. They do great food, and they're doing great stuff. But they're saying they focus so much now on adult entertainment that that's not Disney. Disney is something that's targeted at the kids that the parents can love because their kids are having a wholesome, affordable vacation. You look at the Edison restaurant, 21 and older, and in the evening, the entertainment includes a contortionist and burlesque dancers. All right. I kind of I I like where Disney's going. Got, and this is the argument, yeah. And, and you <laughs> might say, hey, they're not being prudish, and this is the way that Disney needs to be going. They're, they're adapting to where the world is and the world needs to be. And so this is the fight of the old school Disney versus the new school Disney. And that's why I'm going to have Suits put up a poll here on KBJ TV. Is Disney headed in the wrong direction? I'm curious what most people would think. It would be one, I mean, it might, they might be trying to do Disney adult along with regular Disney, kind of like how HBO's got HBO Plus and HBO Max, probably just doing a subset just to have, it's all about money. They know that right. there's going to be some people like me that will go to Disney for uh, drinks. But the argument is adult Disney spills over into kid Disney when you have brawls breaking out in the park and kids are walking by. Adult Disney has now spilled into kid Disney and that's not magic. That's not what Disney is supposed to be. It's not supposed to be viral fights in the streets of Disney. I wish we could talk to Walt. I think you, I, they make a very strong argument. Now, the question is, well, Walt, that's great that you started it, but we've picked it up and we've improved it and taken it into the modern era. Oh, that's what they do with every company. They, they always, even if you start the company, they try to get the old dog out. And then the other point that this person makes about Disney heading in the wrong direction is the politics of Disney. Now, Walt, he was friends with several U.S. presidents. He was in there around political figures, but he was never boisterous about his politics. He wasn't into activism. He didn't take stances. 
He was just there, friendly with politicians, but it's like this is what America is all about. Now, Neutral. Now you've got Walt Disney's CEO, Bob Chappick, fighting with Florida's Governor Ron DeSantis. And, of course, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis firing back and... The end result is legislation passed that is intended to penalize Disney for its stance that it has taken as it is throwing shots at the governor of Florida. The governor of Florida is throwing shots back, and they're saying this is not what Walt would be doing. Walt Disney would not be in a political fight with the governor of Florida. Now, people may argue and say, well, is he not going to stand up for his employees? We applaud Bob that he did that. So, you know, that's why I think you could make a good argument. I'd be curious what people have to say. Is Disney headed in the wrong direction? From my perspective and just kind of reading and just hearing people talk, the number one thing that I have seen is exactly what you just said. Disney is in political and they're in fights. I, I, I never grew up with yeah. Disney being that. And I think that seems to be one of the big factors why there's a war against Disney. There's just there, there's a lot of fighting about. Well, they and a lot of it's about politics. They they entered into a very hot political discourse in our country right now, and they've drawn up a side. And so what do you immediately, mean? people are fighting. Immediately, once you do well, one side or the other. 50% of the population is going to be coming at you with flaming arrows. It was known as the happiest place on earth, but it can't be the happiest place on earth if you're in a political fight and debate with somebody. Disney used to be the escape. Now it is the world. Yes. It is political fights. It is viral brawls in the halls and in the streets. Stan it's Grey Goose on tap. Stances, if you're not with my stance, screw you. I mean, it, it, it's very contentious. It, it turned quite political. I really believe that's the main reason Disney's being called out. It's the financially elite having a great vacation while a majority of Americans can't afford to be doing what you're doing. And they say, that's not Disney. So I'm just kind of curious. What would you say? You can go to the KBJ Show Facebook page. You can also text in your thoughts, 877-979-WRMF. And uh, TikTok might show you that something else is going on that Walt would not allow. Breakdowns on the It's a Small World ride. Oh. People are losing their mind. It has gone viral. There was a video or several posted of the small world ride getting stuck for over an hour and you know they play it's a small world after all it's going on a loop for one hour as you're sitting there in your half sinking boat now they were arguing that it was americans being too large to fit in the it's a small world ride because it was designed for smaller americans in an era where we didn't eat so much damn food so it breaks down and they fat shame everybody and then they fat shamed everybody while they're playing a loop of if it's a small world. <laughs> it's pretty unreal. It ain't a small world in that boat. I yeah. love how they're blaming it on the weight of America. Yes. So this is where we are. Is it Disney's fault? That's the big question. 877-979-WRMF. Okay, so is Disney headed in the wrong direction? I was reading an article from a diehard old Disney fan that is very upset and saying if Walt Disney were alive today, he would not stand for what they are doing in his name. They said the prices are ridiculous on tickets, experiences, dining, resort stays. It's no longer family friendly. You brought alcohol in and now we've got viral fights happening in the streets of Disney. Plus, you've got adult themed restaurants with burlesque dancers. That's not so Disney. That part's cool. And <laughs> you're getting involved in political fights. That's not something Walt Disney would ever do. So, if Walt were alive today, would he like what he sees? Do you think Disney is going in the wrong direction? Got a poll going on right now on KBJ TV, and 85% of the people in the chat room think it is headed in the wrong direction. Okay, now some of the comments that uh, we got says Disney is absolutely going in the wrong direction when the Disney princess and characters push away black kids who want high fives and hugs so they can see the white kids. Absolutely disgusting. This has happened multiple times. Now, I have seen that. That is heartbreaking. But in defense of Disney, I don't know that it's happened yet at a Disney park. It, one was at a Sesame Street land, and I believe that was operated by SeaWorld. And then there was another lawsuit that is going on, but I thought maybe that was a Chuck E. Cheese. So I have not seen that happen with a Disney character yet. But it is wrong and heartbreaking wherever it might happen. So just to uh, defend Disney on that, I don't know. Maybe there's another story because you know yeah, how these maybe things. Yeah, maybe she has a personal experience she's talking could be. about. It could be. I just don't know that I've seen one of those in the news uh, as of late. Uh, but it is possible. So just to be fair to Disney. 
Uh, somebody else said, guys, I'm sorry, but LGBTQ rights should not be a political issue. It's a human rights issue. Politics is a whole other animal. And people could argue that, uh, yeah, maybe Disney wasn't trying to make a political fight, that the governor of Florida made it a political fight when it shouldn't have been and drug the Disney CEO into it. So that maybe would be a way to defend the politics going on. Oh, yeah, I, I that, that's all about your perspective. I, I hear you. On, I'm just letting people know that's mm-hmm. why I think people are. Oh, yeah. That, that would be there, – there's, there's a fight and a swell because of those reasons. Well, I'm, I'm telling you the four reasons this yeah. woman said Disney's headed in the wrong direction, and she listed politics as the fourth reason. We're not saying that that's our perspective. Yeah. We're saying that's the reason why it's going down. It's her argument, yes. Somebody else said Disney's going to become six flags if they lower their prices too much. It's already headed that way with the brawls that they're having. But, yes, keep the alcohol out of the parks. People can't control themselves. And I remember my wife and I were like, we're not going to Disney. They don't have alcohol. They have alcohol now. We love going to Disney. So, you know, but like I said, I don't know that I'm a very Disney-minded person. I see people that love Disney and who have the spirit of Walt. It's not me. That's just not my thing. I I recognize that. I'm like, hey, good for you guys. I'm glad that that's your thing. It's not mine. I'm more of a universal guy. Yeah, you, you, know? you have the spirit of a like a, like a Captain Morgan. Yeah, there I have go. the spirit of viral fights in the streets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> some, pe- some people are annual pass holders and some people aren't. Look, some people are Disney people, some people are universal people. <laughs> that's, that's the way it is. That's the way it is. But uh, as the perspective goes, if the people in our chat room are Disney diehards, there is a strong argument that they're headed in the wrong direction. I know their stock prices have been headed in the wrong direction. Uh, But the app is the reason why the CEO got a three-year extension on his contract. So they like what's uh, going on with the downloads. So you might say maybe the theme park division's not doing its best work, but apparently the Disney app is. And I know they've got a whole bunch of Star Wars spinoffs that they're doing now. I think I saw an Andorra show that is also going to be coming to the app. Oh, you mean the Disney Plus? Yeah. The TV channel. The TV app, yeah. The Disney app. The Disney Plus. Andorra the Explorer? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. that might be what it is. Yeah, so they've. Uh, I don't got even a lot know if I know. I don't even have a know that character. It's it's getting right now. The Star Wars universe is so muddied for me. I, I'm not. A, I'm, I'm a fan, but I'm not a diehard, and it's getting confusing. They're they're making a lot of stuff in Virginia. I, I promise it'll be ten seconds or less. They're, <laughs> they're doing a lot of stuff from the the books and the comic books and all that stuff okay. that I never read or okay. was involved went in. So I think if you wanted to say one argument for Disney is that their programming is is great and they seem to be headed in the right direction in that. So question is, what about them theme parks? Here's what's coming up on the Dirt of the Day. Dirt of the Day. You see in Virginia? I have not. In fact, she's been gone for quite a, a while. Okay. Did and she her, her, her phone is here. Okay. Did, did, she eat, did she eat something bad? I see her running in the lobby now. Okay. Well, then uh, I get to pick what's uh, coming up on the dirt. What happened? Right. Were you in the bathroom? I was. I was, I was fixing my hair because Tyler Cameron's coming in. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right. He's not coming, coming in for like two and a half hours. I know, but I got to start now. Oh, okay. It's a long process. Okay. <laughs> coming up, we're going to hear from Jennifer Coolidge. Is it real? They called her a MILF, but I guess she put that into practice because of American Pie. Jennifer Coolidge, one of my favorites, coming up in your dirt. Entertainment updates five minutes after every hour from the KVJ Show on 97.9 WRMF. Look, we all got problems. That's the one thing that I think we need to uh, remember as we see people out in society. We're all going through something. There's always a burden that we got on our mind. And so we asked just out of curiosity, what are you really nervous about today? What's the big thought that you got on your mind? It was kind of interesting to see some of the revelations that uh, people had for us on the KBJ Show Facebook page. Well, some of them were really big things, and then some were kind of benign, but that sometimes those small things can get you. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Uh, somebody said, I got really drunk at a work function, and now my boss wants to speak with me. Oh, oh I know that move. D- just quit. <laughs> no, don't quit. Cash in your chips. <laughs> because I was called into a meeting for that same thing, and our boss Brody was way cool at the time about it.
He was. He was really nice about it. What did he say? He just said, so uh, what happened, man? And I just was honest. I said, I had too much to drink, and I got on a microphone, and then I threw up in front of the salesperson and the whole audience. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> it was at that Wellington event. <laughs> Remember, I was dressed as a horse, and I was running around the track as a stunt. Oh, And it yeah. was just too much for me to take. It was hot. I was drinking. Me and you were in a fight. <laughs> <laughs> I was so mad because you were so hammered. No, you were. I, I, we have to bring up old wounds. I, I know why you were mad, but it's nothing to do with a, a camera. Well, we'll talk about it later. Okay. <laughs> I forgot. Lots of other stuff, like uh, Brian had said, uh, my upcoming divorce agreement. Yikes. A little bit nervous about that today. Ooh, good luck. Jennifer said, I've got a surgery scheduled in two weeks. It's my first one, so I am super nervous. Yeah, I could get that. Uh, Nicole said, my son is starting kindergarten next week, and I am super nervous about that. Aw, yeah, it's I, so I, tough. I, I've kind of seen that. I'd seen some other moms that they're talking about to other kids about how nervous they are that are starting kindergarten. I mean, you think about that. That's a that's a that's that's one of the biggest steps you will take in life, the day that you don't stay home with mommy or whomever watches you, and now you go off into the world where there's all kinds of other strange children. They're around. I mean, that's that's a lot to go through. Do you remember your first day of kindergarten? I do. It was. It was. It was. I was quite nervous. It was. It was a big deal. I rode the school bus. I was like, "Oh my gosh, this is crazy. This bus is so big." My kindergarten teacher was so mean. The <laughs> meanest old lady ever. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, some of the other things that uh, people put up, of course, uh, biopsy results. Joanne's got. Wishing you the best there. Oh, good luck, good Joanne. Luck. Yep. Uh, another one, Kim's got a job interview she's pretty nervous about. That's kind of a big deal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I dare you, halfway through the job interview, just light up a cigarette. <laughs> it's a power move. Let them know, hey, don't mess with me. <laughs> yeah. Somebody else, Don, said, I'm doing my first shark dive this weekend. A little bit Ooh. nervous about that today. Okay. Be I, careful. Well, don't read the story. I just saw that there's walking sharks now. <laughs> land land sharks? sharks? Yes. For they're, real. There's sharks walking on land. Oh, they got it's not just beer. a delicious beer? No. They're walking. <laughs> wow. <laughs> a lot of people on here are dropping that they're having rent money worries. That's what is on their mind today. That is real. It really is. Sorry to hear that. We talked about that a little bit yesterday on the After the Show podcast. Uh, about uh, some of the relief that they do have for you and just how that is one of the biggest issues happening in South Florida right now is affordable housing for uh, the people that uh, aren't these rich northerners or Californians that are coming in with tons of cash and are used to paying crazy high rents uh, and are not balking at it. So what do the rest of us do? Uh, Somebody else said, uh, yeah, I hooked up with a random guy a few weeks ago, and now I missed uh, my period. I'm doing a pregnancy test today, and I'm a little nervous about that. Oh, Lord. That could be life changing, uh, especially if sometimes you know you hear about these one night stands. They meet, they sleep with each other. They don't know their full name. Right? How do you find him? What if you're in a different state? Go on TikTok. I see a lot of girls on TikTok. They're like, "Yeah, I had a one night stand with this great guy," and they show his picture, and then they show the three year old. They're like, mm, "You have a three year old." Is oh, that really? Is that TikTok just trying to get yeah. nah, Virginia? Stop. I believe everything on TikTok. I know you do, and it's, it's weighing on me and Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Nira said, uh, what I'm nervous about today, every day. Life is uncertain when you're a small business owner. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of nerves with that. And Stephanie said, I'm nervous about going back to work. I'm a teacher, and I'm worried about what kind of craziness is going to be thrown at us this year. So that is going to be happening. In fact, I think today is teacher's first day back. Oh, no. Yeah. It's over, baby. Uh If if a Kevin Ralston had to list what he's worried about currently, what would it be? It is a presentation I have to make to all of our corporate bosses. Oh, that's right. That's on deck. That is coming up in about a week, and I was uh, talking to somebody that is uh, going to be Kind of, a, it's a Q&A kind of thing, but they want to find out the magic behind KBJ. And they said, yeah, the last guy we had, the big morning guy in Chicago, apparently he was so good you could hear a pin drop in the room. So I'm like, 
<laughs> oh, are they yeah. talking about man cow? Uh, no, okay. no, no. It's uh, another guy gotcha. that uh, had been there that uh, had dominated uh, mornings in Chicago for decades. And they said when he gave his presentation that it was captivating. People are still <laughs> talking about it. Yeah. The boss had tears in their eyes. Yeah, you know how they do that? Like in the cartoons, you hear you, Goop, that big old lump in your throat. Yeah. <laughs> what, what are you nervous about? Just maybe what, all of a sudden a snot rocket comes out? A anything? No, it's just blowing it and people are on their phones and they're like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't mind about doing something like that. You know, I'd rather barf in front of everybody just to capture their attention. I'm just worried about losing our baby. Like, yeah, no, you ain't gonna lose nobody. Yeah, pull so. a Jaybird, do a pratfall. Yeah, that gets their attention. It okay. does. It worked. I'm that, sure it's really gonna impress the corporate guys. It's so radio. Like, oh boy, the jackass radio guy doing a fall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, Eric didn't have to fall to entertain us. <laughs> Eric was great. Cheap gimmicks, huh? Eric didn't need stunts. Yeah. This guy's a low budget. <laughs> Eric. <laughs> so that's what got that's what's got my nerves up today. You're gonna nail it, Ralston. Okay, but you know, I'm going in as KVJ, so if I screw it up, V and J get blamed too. Oh, bloody <laughs> what out. That's right. We're fine. It's the KVJ, dirt of the day. It's the KVJ, dirt of the day. Put you take it away, because you know we need that dirt of the day. Dirt of the day. Well, Chrissy Teigen is posting pictures on Instagram. She is pregnant again after suffering that tragic loss just a couple of years ago where uh, she was very, very far along in her pregnancy when they lost uh, their third child, Jack. So she is very excited uh, two years after that loss to announce that she and John Legend are expecting a baby. So good for her. Uh, Jason Momoa did a cute stunt. Did you see the video of him? He was promoting this water company that I guess he's affiliated with. They partnered with an airline. And so he was on the flight handing out the water to people. And people were like, oh, my gosh, Jason Momoa is my flight attendant. This is so cool. Ah. Adorable. Mm -hmm. And uh, finally here, I love Jennifer Coolidge. I think she's adorable. She played Stifler's mom in American <sighs> Pie back in the day. She's from New Orleans. She's super feisty. And here she is talking about playing a MILF in the movie and how it translated to real life. I was so happy for American Pie and the MILF thing. But also, first time Emmy thing, what an honor. I got a lot of play of being a MILF, and I got a lot of sexual action from American Pie. Just, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just talking about, there were so many benefits to doing that movie. I mean, there were about, like, 200 people that I would have never had slept with. <laughs> All right. <laughs> she credits American Pie for adding 200 to her sexual count number. That is the birth of MILF, right? That is. That yeah. really, that's when it became a staple in our vernacular, yeah. She's a legend. Mm -hmm. And that's what's going on in your dirt. Okay, we do have some celebrity birthdays here today to talk about. Big old happy birthday and a shout out to Cole and Dylan Sprouse. They did the Sweet Life back in the day. They do other things now like Riverdale. And they're 30 years old just to make you feel old today. Wow, they're 30? 30 years old. They were the little cute kids and Big Daddy with Adam Sandler way back in the day too. They're so, babies. Yeah, they were babies then. 30 now. Meghan Markle turns 41 years old. Former President Barack Obama Obama is 61, and Billy Bob Thornton is 67 years old. He was in that uh, Gray Man movie I was telling you about. It was uh, on Netflix yeah. that uh, is doing very well right now. Also, happy birthday shout-out to 16-year-old Gianna. We're in the car driving to the Smoky Mountains to spend her sweet 16th. And her sister's first time out of Florida. John John sent that in. I wonder if that's the first time they're either going in the mountains. Is their is their ears bubbling? I remember the first time I was in the mountains, my ears would not stop bubbling. Oh yeah, like, the <sighs> pressure. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Also, a big old shout out to Brianna Ramdat. Happy twelfth birthday. Lots of love and joy. Many blessings and years to come. From mom, Amber, dad, Danny, and sisters Melissa and Jasmine. We love you, Brianna. And you got a photo of the fam there on KVJ TV. Cute. Go to kvjshow.tv to see what's going on here with your lovely photos. Only two days left at Camp KBJ. When we close up Camp KBJ, you know summertime is over because the kids are going back to school. 
So we got a four pack of tickets to both the Rapids Water Park and the Museum of Discovery and Science for you here today. Robert is on from Royal Palm Beach. What's up, Robert? What's going on, guys? How you doing? Doing great. I'm doing awesome. Good. Just getting to my route and listening to you guys. And calling and calling and calling and finally got through. Good. All right. Well, there's only a couple days left. I guess you got an 8 and a 12-year-old that would love to go to Rapids and the Museum of Discovery and Science? Absolutely. Very cool. What have they been doing this summer? I was just pretty much hanging out at the house and, you know, when I'm off on the weekends, we go to the beach or, you know, we go do something. Okay. Very nice. Well, very good. You're going to throw a little different curveball at them here and wrap up their summer with uh, some good stuff. Robert, you have a great day. Okay, bud? All right. Thank you. Okay. There you go. Well, I remember when I was uh, back in high school, I'd heard this lecture from a CEO of a fast food company who talked about the secret to success was to do every single job that you had to the best of your ability. He started by sweeping floors at this fast food restaurant, and then one day he becomes the CEO because at every position he was the best of the best. He was the best floor sweeper. Then he was the best fry guy, the best cashier, the best store manager, and then he worked to become the best CEO. It was a philosophy when I heard that that really kind of I absorbed into my life and I said, hey, it worked for this guy. That's it. Just always try to be the best at whatever position you are given. It's the hustle. That's what it is. Let your supervisor see how hard you work and you will be promoted to the top of the ranks. Nah, I just want to be a social influencer. <laughs> what way is there quicker? But you only have 200 followers. Don't worry. <laughs> it's going to grow. The thing I find interesting, and I did lean in because at first this completely goes against my whole core philosophy of life of how you succeed and how you go about the task that you are given. It's called quiet quitting. I mentioned it briefly yesterday on the After the Show podcast. It's kind of a new term. If you've not heard of it, quiet quitting is when you stay at your job, but you stop going above and beyond and you just do the bare minimum. And I thought, well, maybe that's burnout. Maybe it has to do with people talking about work-life balance. But it's an interesting theory that is really tied into more than just kind of going through the motions at your job. The theory is that you shouldn't grind for the company you work for. Exactly the opposite of what I've always done. They say that companies now don't respect those that grind. And once you start, you won't get the financial rewards that you are owed. They say that if you're going to sweep a floor extra well or you're going to clean out a bathroom and you don't necessarily have to, you better be financially rewarded for that extra effort that you apply. When you do all the extra work, other people aren't doing it. And not everyone's going to be a hard worker. So if you are going above and beyond, you're doing a bunch of stuff, other employees aren't doing it and they're getting paid the same amount as you. Yeah. And so in a sense, I guess that's what they're saying is that, no, don't try to rise above. Don't be the cream at the top. Stay down with the rest of the milk. Now, I thought this is like, well, this just doesn't seem to really work out for me. I don't really get this. But they say that, one, you can maintain a healthy work-life balance. But also, when you ask for extra rewards, you then can excel at that point and make some money. And they said, you're also thinking about a concept where this CEO I was telling you about, he started at this fast food restaurant as the floor sweeper and then advanced to being the CEO of the company. And they said, that's the way things used to go. But part of quiet quitting is the concept of using each job as a quick stepping stone to go on to the next. And with each step, you advance your pay and your title. But as soon as you have the job and are kind of established in it, you're immediately looking for the next step. You're not sitting there in the company saying, I'm going to do the best here, and I hope that one day they'll promote me to the next rung. But they say that too often people get stuck in middle management, and you've got to go to a new place and have a new, fresh set of eyes seeing you and seeing you differently. Because often when you stay with a company, they're like, yeah, that's Bob. He's just always going to be middle management. And you don't advance in your career and you get stuck. In my opinion, I just, I really do think, I hear what you're saying. I mm -hmm. think it really depends on the job. And there's certain jobs where you do, people have to work hard and, and you can't, there's no way you're going to be able to do subpar work. There's just certain gigs like that. It all really depends on the job. Now, when you're talking about sweeping the floor and working at restaurants, 
cuts and stuff like mm-hmm. that, where you're you're on a uh, lower salary stuff, uh, you're going to see a lot of that because everyone's getting paid pretty much the same. And mm-hmm. then one person may be going above and beyond. They're not getting any extra money, and that can be frustrating. I think what they would say is the different model now is when you're a floor sweeper at one, you then go to apply to be a cashier at the other and say, yeah, I've been sweeping floors for a while at this one place. Then you get to become a cashier. Then after you're a cashier, then you go to the next one after six months and say, yeah, I've been a cashier here. I'd like to be a manager. And then that's the way you climb up. The rungs are different companies. It's not just climbing up the rungs of just one. Because too often now, companies are taking advantage of their employees. They're not paying them what they're worth, and they're expecting them to grind, and that's not fair. If you do this quiet quitting where you stay at your job, but you don't really go above and beyond, you're climbing to the next company, where I guess in a sense you maintain a sense of mediocrity, but then you just keep jumping up with extra money and titles. If, if you were able to get with a company that you respect and that you'd go through a wall for, and and they treat you good and you have a good relationship I would mm. see more people, you know, working and going above and beyond. And there are places are. like that. There, are. there absolutely are. You just can't let them change you. Don't let the man change you. If you're a high achieving person and you've got dreams and goals and you want to do great work, you do that. Don't let the system change you. Yeah, I agree. I I, cause I think it's a personality thing as well. It there, there's is. some people, if you give them a broom, they are going mm. to do the best job no matter what. Mm. That's just how they are built. Yeah. And I th- I really do think that kind of personality is the way to go you would hope that somebody will see that broom pushing and acknowledge it and reward it and i still have to hope that that's out there well, just, that can't be dead well imagine take because imagine taking that same mentality and then applying it to something you legit want to get involved you're a hard worker and now you're do now you're focusing your attention on something you want to be involved with you don't want to sweep a floor but you're still going to do it because you have that kind of work ethic mm-hmm. imagine if you do something you love The thing that I think is interesting about the concept, and I agree, I'll never go into something and just dial it in. I I, I can't. That's against my core principle of of who I am. It doesn't feel good. But what I think is smart about this is do not get stuck in the rut of the same company. I do like using other companies to step up to the next because they argue right now the job market has more jobs than it ever has. And it's easier to put your resume out there with how many. When I was climbing up through the ranks, we didn't have necessarily the LinkedIn's and all those different places. Places where you can post and continually jump up the next rung easily. And you that way don't necessarily get taken advantage of by a company who takes your hard, backbreaking work for granted and doesn't give you the financial rewards that you do deserve. Yeah, I think that's what it comes down to. The people that are quietly quitting, are, are they're not getting the respect. They're working too much. They're not getting paid what they want. But that is not everywhere. Mm-hmm. And if you're in that situation and you just like, oh, man, I'm sweeping, and they only see me as a sweeper, they're not giving me opportunities to move up and be anything but a sweeper, then, yes, I would tell you to go to a different company and, and try to work your way up. But if you're in a company that recognizes good sweeping and then promotes sweepers, show them the best sweeping they've ever seen. And I wouldn't change that either because I don't. I think it's more than the whole career thing. When you are that kind of person, I think it's going to help you build good character as well. You can apply that kind of work ethic in many situations in life, whether it's a personal relationship, whether it's self-growth, if mm-hmm. you have that kind of uh, mentality. Somebody texted in said our son is just 17 years old and he makes double pay since he started working. He's on his third job and has done exactly what you're talking about. He's doing the same job just with experience and he gets hired at a different place with a better pay rate. Yeah, and I'm not saying that this cannot happen. I, I think it can. I, I just think it's going to depend on the job. Mm-hmm. Um, and somebody else said that uh, my friend is very successful in commercial real estate and he always says the best way to make more money is to switch companies. Hmm. So, huh. but yeah. that's his business, though. That's the real estate business. Does that apply for the radio business? Does that apply for a construction worker? I think you have to be self-aware and you have to look at your situation, look at your company, and be ready to leave if you have to. If you're not advancing where you are, mm-hmm. growth is awesome. And if you're not getting it and you want it, you deserve it, and you might just have to leave. We've heard that about radio. We know people in radio that like have always been in this one position and they said they had to leave to get another position and and get respected. Yeah, I did that once. 
Had to. It happens. Mm -hmm. But you have to be self-aware, and you have to know your situation, and you have to see what's going on around you. And if there's just no chance for advancement where you are, absolutely move around. I I know somebody, all they ever, they they were a teacher, and they always complained about being a teacher. They were a teacher for over 10 years, always complaining, never happy, liked, liked teaching, started, started to not like teaching because of it. And they finally said, you know what, I'm sick of bitching to everybody. I'm sick of I need to make my own. I got to get out. I'm not happy doing this anymore. It's not going to change. I need to get out. And 10 years is way too long to be unhappy and not make a change. Somebody else uh, texted in the concept about using other companies and jumping up and about grinding and busting your butt for one employer that may not recognize it is they say right now employers are too worried about getting new employees and they're losing sight of the ones that they currently have. And that's why you're seeing people who are busting their butts saying, Hey, look at me, boss. He's not paying attention because he's scanning the job market too much and is losing sight of the employees that he does have. And they're not being rewarded for their good work. That's why a lot of people like working for themselves Working with managers can be difficult. People that are o- over you, you know, it, it's, it can be tough. <laughs> I know a lot of people that have gone into business for themselves for that reason. Yeah, and uh, people said what's different now is there's no more reward for loyalty. And these companies aren't loyal like they used to, where they would recognize a good employee that started with them, and they took pride in that, that they would spend their whole career with them. A lot of these companies don't care anymore, and you're a commodity to them. So if they use you as a commodity, use them as a commodity. And a way to advance yourself up. Yeah, I think the stepping stepping stone to each job is good when you work for a company that doesn't really give a crap about you. Mm-hmm. So interesting thought there about uh, the quiet quitting. When I read that yesterday, I'm like, I cannot buy into this. And I don't buy into the slacking. But I am intrigued by the concept of instead of staying with one company, hopping around to others. And then as soon as you get to one and establish yourself... Use that new title and pay scale to jump to the next. Times do change, and you can't be a dinosaur. Absolutely. Ah. (laughs) I guess you can. (laughs) People fighting online, losing their minds. So we read the crazy crap they write and have a fun time. Well, get ready for this week's digital drama. Okay, we have got an interesting post here. Anderson was just trying to make friends in the neighborhood. He thought he was going to be welcome. Sadly, he was mistaken. I will play the role of Anderson here. Virginia, you can be Craig. We'll have Jaybird playing the role of Billy and Denny's. You can be Eve. Oh, Eve. Eve. Give it to us, Eve. (laughs) I like when Denny's has to play a chip. Me too. (laughs) Okay, here's what we got from Anderson. I just moved to the area. I'm the single guy in his mid-40s that has the bear statue in his front lawn. I'd love it if somebody would come over and welcome me to the neighborhood. I'd lighten up on the positivity, Anderson. This street's full of sex workers and druggies. It was never like this before. You best get out now. (laughs) Oh, jeez. Craig isn't wrong. The whole block has turned into a drug-infested hellhole. I'm not kidding, but a woman in her 80s tried to sell me smack the other day. I was also offered sex from a drunk homeless man while taking out my trash. Positivity dies when it reaches this neighborhood. Get out. Yeah, anyone new that moves in usually is peddling drugs. (laughs) Then they get on next door and try to make connections with other people who want to buy drugs. Uh, Is that what you're doing, Anderson? That's exactly what I thought, Craig. Anderson's (laughs) post reeked of a potential drug deal. Sorry, Anderson. <laughs> Damn. But if you're trying to sell drugs or traffic sex, get the hell off this thread and out of our neighborhood. Golly gee, what the hell are you people talking about? I'm not a druggie or a drug dealer. I moved to the area because it was the only place I could afford. You're the ones who sound like you're on drugs. I was just trying to be a friendly neighbor. I mean, what the hell is going on here right now? <laughs> Don't listen to these morons, Anderson. There might be some problems in our neighborhood, but it's got a heart. Damn it. Some of y'all need to knock that chip off your shoulder before you get a talking from Silly Billy. Well, thanks, Silly Billy, for saying that. I'm not sure what I did to offend people. I was just trying to meet my new neighbors. And no, it's not for drugs. You are welcome here in our (laughs) neighborhood, Anderson. And if you ever want to get silly with Billy, just let me know. I know you said you don't do drugs, but weed is not a drug. (laughs) And we should burn one down soon. (laughs) Weed is not a drug. (laughs) That's right, silly Billy. Thank you. 
Also, we got a fun post here from social media about Clay, who's ranting about how reality TV is ruining the world. Well, it's been on for like 30 years now. <laughs> Which, I mean, to get with Clay. The Clay. Yeah. <laughs> of course, it gets political. Uh, I will play the role of Clay here. We'll have Virginia playing the role of Grace. Bird, you can be Nadine and Denny's. You will play the role of Rita. Ooh, Ooh. Rita, get it. I feel like Rita is uh, sassy and Hispanic. Okay, Denny's, you got that? Oh, wow. <laughs> Don't blow it. He's going to have to answer his own complaint calls. <laughs> yeah, I want to do my best for the people. <laughs> All right, here's what uh, Clay put on his post. People who want reality TV are part of the problem, not the solution. Get off your fat ass and contribute something to our society. Okay, rant over. There's nothing wrong with watching reality TV. <laughs> People who get mad at stupid things like this are what's the problem with the world? Not reality TV. Stop ripping <laughs> on stuff you don't understand anything about. Oh, man. <laughs> Let me guess, Rita. You're obsessed with reality TV. My ex-wife also loved reality TV, and she was the worst person on the planet. It caters to the lowest form of our society. You sound so much like my stupid ex-wife. <laughs> Damn. Oh, man. Clay, you sound like you hate women because your ex-wife did you wrong. Maybe look within, because you sound like an outdated douche. And you probably have a small dong, just saying. <laughs> Reality TV is for the mindless and spineless human garbage that's out there. It's what got Biden elected. We are living in sad times and we celebrate Kim Kardashian and not someone like Candace Cameron Burr. Now, she's a role model to look up to. <laughs> Ew, gross. Nadine is bringing politics into a discussion that doesn't need to be anything about politics. Let me guess, Nadine, you love Trump, SMH. You're damn right. I'm bringing politics into this. Former President Ronald, it says Reagan. Reagan. I think she meant to put Reagan. Reagan. Former President Ronald Reagan is turning <laughs> over his grave right now. Yeah, because of your typo. <laughs> and I blame a lot of that on reality TV. Who the hell is Ronald Reagan? Are you talking about Ronald Reagan, you dummy? You can't even spell. And I'm supposed to take your worldview seriously? <laughs> reality TV isn't the problem, woman. It's you. Great sounds like the kind of person who thinks The Bachelor is real. People like that are making our planet stupid, and I'm not sure that they belong here anymore. Just saying. Hashtag Operation Eliminate Stupid People. <laughs> Clay is running hot. Wait, we, The Bachelor's not real? We might want to keep an eye on Clay. Virginia just had a, a moment. <laughs> Wait a minute, it's not real. Stop the press. <laughs> it's Stop. real to me, damn it. Oh. <laughs> so what happened on the KBJ show and you never got a conclusion to it? Or you're just like, yeah, whatever happened with that? I don't even know. I didn't get the update on it. Well, this is where you can ask those questions. Right now, you can text them into us, 877-979-WRMF, 877-979-9763. Okay, here are some of the questions that people want an update to. What happened to Mariana? Hey, we are still getting that. Uh, a lot. There was a lot of that. She's doing well. Uh, my wife let me know she's uh, pregnant now. I talked to her yesterday. I saw... Okay. I saw so many comments I said, well, let me just reach out and get an update for everybody. Mm -hmm. She is pregnant with her third baby right now. Okay. Yeah, so that's the update. I saw her about two months ago, and uh, she's doing well, her and her husband, Bill. She's a happy mom now, doing a lot of mommy-type stuff, and I think he was going to start working with her. She's doing a lot of mommy blog stuff and social media, and uh, it sounded like they are going to relocate back to his hometown of Pittsburgh. So I think they're still here. But uh, that's kind of where Marianne is. She's doing fantastic in life. You leave KBJ and apparently you thrive. <laughs> it goes back to your theory. Just keep leaving the job. Yeah. <laughs> just keep leaving KBJ. Everyone who's left KBJ, they're all doing very well, by the way. They're all very successful, very rich. They're doing great in life. Uh, Joan wanted to know here, is that girl leaving 
Virginia's daughter Magnolia alone now. Whatever happened? Virginia showed up at the house with the ball bat and all kinds of craziness <laughs> broke out. Is there uh, the dad was drunk? Or yeah. Is there yeah. an update to that? I haven't heard anything from that girl, that dad. Like I, I, I don't think they have said anything to Mags either. They kind of just it died down. It died down. Yeah. Okay, so that was it, huh? I was waiting for there to be more action, more heat. I and went and I went and told the Jupiter Police Department what had happened because I was like, all right, I want this to be on record in case it goes down. Right. But then nothing ever happened else from it. I think maybe the parents all said to the kids, all right, let's just stop. Let's yeah. just be cool. We don't need to be escalating. It, we got it this, was silly. We got this raging Cajun on the microphone <laughs> right. talking some, some junk. This woman's insane. <laughs> right. <laughs> Let's not poke this crazy bear. Well, you went to the house, so you did show up to the, the gig. <laughs> I don't let things fester. I deal. Yeah, this, this woman has ruined daddy's buzz. <laughs> I oh, he probably it. went back in the house and go, oh, man, what was that? I just wanted to get Why? my drink on tonight. Why yeah. am I involved? I was in such a good mood. I came home from dinner. Right. <laughs> I'm sorry I ruined his puppy chulo buzz. <laughs> All right, another uh, update question here. Summer wants to know, what happened with Jason's couch? Did he put it by the curb? Did he get a new couch? It's a great question. It's still there. It's, it's okay. still got... Uh, I've, I've, I have to really slam it. It's a, it's a whole to do. I'm working on getting another couch. I just have not had time to go couch shopping, but it is on my list. Okay. But no, I have not thrown it out yet. Okay. Also, any update on the lake garbage dumping man near Denny's house? Oh, that's Bailey, a good question. Bailey has uh, that question about uh, what is going on with that saga. There was a guy that was just throwing his garbage bags right into the lake near Denny's house. About 30 or so bags he had on the video that uh, he showed us. It was hauling. It was bad. Mm-hmm. So I have not even seen that guy since... They cleaned the lake. So I don't know if he relocated. I don't know if he's just hiding out now. Maybe they killed him. Why? Wow, you start talking about your problems and the people you have beef with on the microphone, and they just go away. <laughs> They've disappeared. Well, I told a lot of neighbors, too, so I wonder if they see him and maybe he was getting heat from people. I don't know. but That guy deserved heat. I totally agree. And then the update after that, after we got the lake clean, I then got penalized for feeding the otters. <laughs> so, you know, you get, you get in good, and then you immediately get in right. bad again. So, <laughs> you, know, I mean, you can't win. Dude, in your defense, otters are adorable. Uh, show me a person that wouldn't feed the otters. That's what I said, but yeah. You, look, either die the hero, live long enough, become the villain. You're right. You're, you live long <laughs> enough. So, yeah, that's the update. So Okay. Text here wants to know, did Jason fire his lawn guy? I <laughs> I did. Okay, you he's did. going on. I did, yes. I uh, I was very polite. I had a different approach than Virginia. Good cop, bad cop kind of a thing. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I just said it's uh, no longer services are needed. I am in the market for a lawn person, but I think I'm just going to co- cut my own lawn. I think that's the right way to go. You don't have much grass. I don't, and I know how to mow a lawn. It I, would I, take you five minutes to cut your own grass. I know every time I talk about it, the, the comments are, oh, he's going to cut off his foot. But I'm going to be okay. <laughs> I used to mow my lawn back in Lake Park. Your toes are nervous, <laughs> but... I think you can do this. Yes, I think we're going to be good. (laughs) Camilla had a couple of questions here. One, she said, I was surprised to hear that Kevin's son is no longer living in Atlanta. Where does he live now? Did he finish his Ph.D. program? If so, what is he doing for work? Yeah. Yeah, my son has uh, left Atlanta. He's not there. He now lives in Nashville, Tennessee. He just got there a couple of weeks ago. He joined a band. Uh, Yes. (laughs) Good for him. He said F science. Good for him. F science. (laughs) He's got a big old shirt he wears that says F science. <laughs> that would be the great name for a band, F Science. Oh, yeah. uh-huh. Daddy's writing checks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he is in a five-year program that he was doing at Georgia Tech, and he did the first two years. Year three is an internship, and they find you a place to go, and so he has an internship. I don't know if it's at Vanderbilt in Nashville, but it's somewhere there. So he's going to spend the next year in Nashville. He's living with a couple of friends of his that he went to high school with in Del Rey. They also live in Nashville now, too, so he's got oh. an apartment and uh, two roommates. And uh, that's where he is currently, I assume, after this year he has to head back to Atlanta. Do we know these roommates? Have you met them? Yeah, I've met them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're cool? Yeah, I know them from high school. Yeah, they're very cool. She wants to ask you four or five more questions (laughs) that don't really mean anything. I don't have the answer to. I just want to make sure he's in a good environment because roommates can make or break you. They can. Yeah, I think he's in a great environment. So, I don't know. We'll we'll see. Everything is good. 
Um, it's an interesting dynamic. They're a couple, and uh, so he's kind of the third wheel thing, and that can always be interesting. So I'm always intrigued by that dynamic, but so far, so good. Would you would you be weirded out if he came back and like, Dad, I'm in a country band. I, or I, I, I'm I, in a thruple. Or thr I'm in a country <laughs> band, and we're all That'd be together. fascinating because they're, they're two girls, so that would Ooh. be very interesting. A high five, that kid. <laughs> yeah. I'll, so he's in a threes company situation it right It would be now? exactly a threes company. <laughs> wow. Daddy's, Daddy's proud. And then, and then he'd say to me, Dad, what's threes company? <laughs> <laughs> no, half, our, half our audience. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's where he is and uh, what he's doing. <laughs> Fascinating. Now, when he finishes the internship in Nashville, mm -hmm. will he go back to Georgia? I would assume so, yeah. Okay. I, I assume that's the plan. So that's uh, kind of where we are. Once you get that country music in your system, though, forget yeah. about it. Did he move all his stuff? Yeah. Wow. I mean, I mean, he has nothing, no ties to Atlanta the now. The old apartment's just empty. He's gone. Done. Yeah, he's, he's done with that. What was his last haircut? <laughs> yeah, I don't know really. Okay. Know. Yeah. Right. I don't really know. Anything else? I'm not sure what he uh, <laughs> plans on having for breakfast today. Are you mocking me? <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm mocking. <laughs> Uh, she also wanted to know, did Virginia's hairstylist Justin break up with that guy that he met on vacation a while back? I saw him on Justin's Instagram for a bit, but then he disappeared, so I assume oh. they broke up. But if she can share what happened, I'm curious because they seem to be doing well. So apparently you're getting your friend Justin a lot of Instagram followers, and they're now <laughs> intrigued with the saga of his hairdressing lifestyle. Okay, Justin is great on Instagram, so okay. I don't blame you for following him. So that hot, super hot guy that he met on vacation he brought him here and they went down to fort lauderdale uh -huh. and they were clubbing and the super hot guy like lost his mind what he was all drunk and belligerent and being mean to everybody in the group oh no and they had a fight and he told the guy i mean the guy's much younger than him he was total <laughs> twink hot, oh. oh yeah you know hot. Yeah. but they're fun for a little while it's, it's tough to say no to for a while yeah. and i think that when everybody sobered up the next day Justin was just like, I'm sorry, dude, this is not going to work out. You're just too young. And that was yeah. too awful of a night. I mean, too much drama, epic drama, real bad stuff. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. But they're still friends. I'm okay. still friends with the hot guy on Instagram. We talk. OK. His pictures are awful fun to look at. Yeah. <laughs> Super hot. Yeah. That's just kind of it. Young Justin drama. has a new boyfriend. Oh, he does. OK. Yeah. And that's going a, well? Uh, yeah, they've been together for, I think, like eight months now. Thought so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good and for him. they go up to, like, the Hamptons. Okay. Like, the new boyfriend is wealthy. He's established. He's established. Yes. Mm -hmm. He's secure in his manhood. He's a real man. Wow. Is he going to look at Justin? He's growing up, huh? I guess so. Getting on the tour. Well, I was asking Justin, do you stay at your condo anymore? And no, he stays over on Palm Beach with the new man at okay. his Fancy crib. Does Justin still have the twink itch? <laughs> we all do. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't think you want that after. The twink. I got an itch. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, the twink itch. I don't know if you want that. Uh, Carlos wanted to know, what is the ghost situation now at Jaybird's place? You know, it, it, it's always active. Uh, there, there's moments where there's stuff that happens. Um, I've been kind of caught up with a lot of other stuff. But, yeah, there, there, there's still a lot of activity going on there. Sometimes it'll be a week without anything. Sometimes it'll be two weeks without anything. Okay. But, yeah, there's definitely still uh, activity going on there. Okay. And uh, Vinny wanted to know, did the Mexican queen ever start showering regularly? Yeah, I, she snapped that streak. In fact, she had a shower this morning. Wow. It's, it's still odd to see, but yeah, she she went back to bathing. Pixar didn't happen. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. Well, that's a, that's a win. I look at that as a very positive thing, yeah, especially yeah. for you, Kevin. It is. I, I feel like a lucky man. So there People you go. always <laughs> ask me that, and they think that we made that up, that that wasn't real when she wasn't showering. No, there's the, it's, it's always a fascinating watch. She's always got something going on. Well, for all, for, for, it, it's real to us. I mean, it, it, It's real. Unless the Ralstons are, are doing bits behind our back. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> no, I, I feel like my whole family is doing bits on me. <laughs> So I'm like, y'all Yo, can't be serious, right? Am I in an episode of Punked? That's kind of how I feel, but yeah, she's back to showering. So there you go. Who wants to laugh their ass off? Ooh, I know I do. Ha, 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 ha. He wrote some funny punchlines just for me and you. It's Danny's Joke Jury. Who's ready to laugh? Oh, man, oh, man, am I ready for some comedy? We need it, Kev. <laughs> That's right, we do. What do you got for us today, Danny's? All right, uh, what do noodles say after they pray? What do noodles say after they pray? I don't know. What do they say? Ramen. 
Ramen. <laughs> Noodle yeah. comedy. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, second joke. Uh, what was the arsonist doing on the dating app? Arsonist doing on the dating app. I don't know. What was the arsonist doing on the dating app? Looking for matches. Oh. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> so good. Very good. Uh, what hip-hop skunk was shot right before dropping a rap album? Hip-hop skunk? I don't know. 50 Cent? Cent. <laughs> S-C-E-N-T. Wow. 50 Cent. I mean, Play on words. Yeah. It's a thinker. Yeah. yeah. It's a thinker and a stinker. <laughs> Uh, fourth joke. Uh, what did the tailor say after he dropped some acid? I don't know. What did he say? Nothing's as it seems. <laughs> uh, and final joke. Uh, why did they arrest the jazz musician for flashing his instrument in public? Flashing his instrument in public? I don't know. Why did they arrest him for that? Because it's a sax crime. Oh. Okay, Daddy. Homegrown. Homegrown comedy. <laughs> It's the KVJ, dirt of the day. It's the KVJ, dirt of the day. Virginia, take it away, cause you know we need that dirt of the day. Yeah, it was a crazy story. We were all riveted by the Lady Gaga dog snatching story. And her dog walker had got shot, so they were looking for the people, and they found the guy that did it, and they locked him up, and then they accidentally released him and everybody was like you did what (laughs) now he's locked back up again i guess they found him and he's back in custody so he will have to answer for his crimes and that's good Mm -hmm. uh in other news this one seems like a light sentence tell me what you think the guy that killed Nicki Minaj's father. Okay, Nicki Minaj's dad was like um, walking along a roadway back in uh, February of last year. He was only 64 when this dude struck him with his car, and it was a hit and run. So the dude hit Nicki Minaj's dad who was walking. Nicki Minaj's dad died, and the guy left the scene and tried to hide his car, but they found him. They only gave him a year in prison for that. Is that weird to y'all? Hmm. I feel like if you kill somebody, you should do more than a year in prison. He left the scene of the crime. I mean, he could have stopped and called 911 and possibly helped give life-saving care to Nicki Minaj's dad, and he got a year? Yeah, that's... That guy's of... a monster. See what I did? She, she sings Bond? No. I did. Right. I saw it. You try, you try to help out in the dirt, Kev. <laughs> I know, right? You get shamed for yeah. it. Try to be topical. Yeah. You love that song. I, I, I thought, do love that song. I thought song. I'd do right by you by doing this. <laughs> and finally here, uh, even though Bob Saget is not with us anymore, uh, his guys, uh, John Mayer, Jimmy Kimmel, Jeff Ross, they are continuing his Scleroderma Research Foundation and the benefit that Bob used to do every single year. They are now going to be hosting it in his honor, and tickets are going to be going on sale. It's called cool comedy hot cuisine and a bunch of celebrities are showing up to now make it a tribute to bob saget that's beautiful and that's what's going on in your dirt it's time for viral audio so had your kids had your wife double rainbow all the way across the sky ain't nobody got time for that boy we thought amber heard's attorneys were terrible maybe not as bad as alex jones I don't know if you've been following this story, but this is absolutely unreal. Now, Alex Jones is a loudmouth conspiracy theorist guy, very right wing, and he's the crazy nutball that has been saying that the Sandy Hook massacre wasn't real. And he's even said the same thing about like the Parkland shooting. And he says it's all these, whatever they call them, the false flag. And there are actors. And the pain is real of these families. It's bad enough that you had to lose your child, but then you have somebody that's going on and getting their audience all whipped up into thinking that you're part of some big government conspiracy theory. And Scott Lewis and Neil Heslin have both testified that because Alex Jones went on his show and said that they were actors and part of the false flag, they started getting death threats and harassment after the death of their six-year-old son. Oh, my god! So on top of losing their six-year-old son, now they're dealing with death threats because apparently they are actors. And in fact, in this court case, 
Uh, Lewis had asked Alex Jones, do you think I'm an actor? And Alex Jones is now like, uh, no, I don't think you're an actor. No, and so, no, I don't. So it's just absolutely unbelievable. So they are seeking $150 million in damages from Alex Jones's company. And so they're trying to nail him down that he knew about this, that uh, Sandy Hook was 100% real. And now, yesterday in court, Alex Jones finally testified that he believes the massacre at Sandy Hook was 100% real because he's afraid of losing his whole company and his ass. And now he's finally like, okay, I'm going to stop trolling these families with this awful, awful line that I have that this whole thing was fake and that you guys were actors. But did you see the main thing that happened yesterday? So what happened is oh. Alex Jones's uh, legal team inadvertently sent the opposing lawyers two years worth of Alex Jones's own text messages. They copied his phone, made a digital copy, and sent it accidentally <laughs> to their attorneys. And it showed that Alex Jones, he testified he had never sent any texts about acknowledging Sandy Hook. He said all that under oath. But he did for two years, sent all kinds of texts, and now the opposing legal team has it. And they confronted Alex Jones, and he didn't know they had it. They, oh. so <laughs> they, they, they sat on it, Virginia, for 10 days. So they, what they wanted wanted to do was they wanted to see if they could bait him and let have him, him lie. Let him lie in court, let him lie in court. And when, if you haven't seen the clip yet, when Alex Jones finds out that they have the phone, you can tell he's trying to think and scramble. He's on the witness stand yeah. when they say, hey, by the way, you don't realize that your legal team sent us all of your text messages for the last two years where you said you didn't send any texts. I mean, they sent all of the text messages. Whoopsie. Here's what that sounded like. Your attorney's messed up and sent me an entire digital copy of your entire cell phone with every text message you've sent for the past two years. And that is how I know you lied to me when you said you didn't have text messages about Sandy Hook. I see, I told you the truth. This is your Perry Mason moment. I gave them my phone and then- Mr. Jones, you need to answer the question. No, I, you I, know I, my lawyer sent it to you, but I'm hiding it, okay. You were asked, do you have Sandy Hook text messages on your phone? And you said no. You know what perjury is, right? I just want to make sure you know before we go any further. Yes, I do. I mean, I'm not a tech guy. I told you I gave the phone to the lawyers before or whatever. And, and so you got my phone, but we didn't give it to you. Oh, boy. Yes. And now they're going after perjury charges against Alex Jones because the judge even reminded him, said, hey, you know, this isn't your show, right? You're perjuring you, yourself. You fully understand that. Your beliefs do not make something true. You are under oath. They. We just want to make sure you understand because we can prove you're perjuring yourself. And yet you continue on with this dumb line and these lies that you're saying. These have consequences. Your lies have consequences here. On your show, you can lie all you want. You're protected. First Amendment rights. But here, when you're lying, you're under oath. We can penalize you for what you're doing. And what, where was his show? Was he on radio? He's uh, on uh, YouTube, Facebook, a lot of social media stuff. Okay. In fact, they're trying to go over, they want him for $150 million, and they showed that in one day he had brought in $800,000 because he's trying to say that I'm broke, I only have $2 million left, you can't take anything from me because he has been banned on a lot of the platforms that have really cut into how much money he has been making, and he's trying to say that he doesn't have it. Gotcha. And so that's where he is on a lot of those platforms. So uh, courts in Texas and Connecticut have already found Alex Jones liable for defamation for his portrayal of the Sandy Hook massacre. And things aren't looking good in this round either. <laughs> They're not. Not looking good. Well, it just, it, it's just like a movie seeing somebody on it, trial he, he not even, know they had the information. They had the smoking gun the whole time. He even said it. Here's your Perry Mason moment. It's the uh, gotcha moment. Why is he still talking though? Like, why is I he don't still purging? It. It's, like, it's, he's a dope. It's one of the dumbest things that I've ever <laughs> seen, ever. Wow. Yeah. And uh, the amount of people that do believe him. I, a lot of court has been entertaining this year. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> that was right. a good year. Yeah. Good year. Uh, one thing that uh, my wife is all obsessed with on TikTok is Bama Rush. And she's not <laughs> the only one. She's like, this is the biggest thing ever. And I guess it is. The hashtags Bama Rush and Rush Talk racked up over 1 billion TikTok views last year. 1 wow. billion. So it is big. There's 2,575 students that have signed up for Rush at the University of Alabama that starts on August 6th. And they go on there and they show their Kendra Scott jewelry. 
You know, they got a Kendra Scott at Meisner Park in Boca. Fit check. Fit check. They got their tote bags are really big. And here is TikToker Grayson Edmondson. She's showing off her bag. A little fit check for her Bama Rush. I'm going to be using my pink Lone Champ bag. And I tied a little ribbon with my initials on it to the side so I know it's mom. So in that bag, I have safety pins, a sewing kit, a first aid little kit, and a compact mirror. Some Advil, hand sanitizer, wipes, and fashion tape. And then I have this Tide to Go Mole Skin for blisters, and then these toothpicks. A stick of deodorant, hairspray, roller perfume, lip gloss, and a hair clip. I have a notebook and pen, so if I need to write any notes about any of the houses. I just don't understand why some things in life are so popular. Kevin, you and me both. Wow. <laughs> I think we're going to do a fit check for Bird on his trip up to Logan. He's nice. going to show you everything he's packing in his Bigfoot bag. We'll maybe put him in a blonde wig with pigtails. Now, do you want me to talk like this? Kind of like you, a Southern belle. Yeah, I've you, got my Walmart <laughs> underwear. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I will do that for you. Yes, please in the accent. It I needs will. to be just like I a will. Bama Rush, but I want to see everything you're packing in your Bigfoot bag. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we all do dumb things. Sometimes when we do, we're little kids. Other times, we're drunk adults. If you can tell the difference, you're going to get hooked up with some tickets that'll make you a drunk adult. BRK, Republic, West Palm Beach Beer Festival is going off Saturday in the 500 block of Clematis. And we got uh, Melissa on here from Lake Worth Beach to play a fun round of low kid or drunk adult with us. Hello, Melissa. Hi, guys. How are you? Great. How are you doing? Good. Good. Okay. What we're going to do here is we're going to hear a story of something dumb that somebody did. you got to guess when they did it. Were they a little kid or a drunk adult? Okay? Okay. Okay. Melissa sent this in on the mic drop feature of the WRMF app that you can download for free. What is the dumb thing that you did here, Susan? I accidentally spilled a milkshake on a baby I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I don't know. Is that bad for the baby? I'd be kind of pumped. <laughs> All right. Uh, what do you think, <laughs> Melissa? Does this sound like something a little kid or a drunk adult would do? Uh, it sounds like both, but my first guess was drunk adult. Going to go drunk adult. What would you guys say? Drunk adult. Yeah, yeah, drunk adult. Okay. All right. What were you here, Melissa? I was at a rodeo in Davie, Florida. But I was a little kid. Oh. <laughs> I had just gotten a milkshake, oh. and as I was getting ready to take a sip, I accidentally dropped it off the second balcony and landed square on top of a random baby's head. Oh. Thankfully, the parents were so drunk that they actually thought it was funny. Oh, okay. So the parents were drunk. Susan was not. <laughs> That's just good, clean fun at the rodeo, kid. That is. Thank goodness the parents thought it was funny. Mm -hmm. Okay, we got three chances for you to try to get one right here, Melissa. This is a story that Isaac sent us. What did you do, Isaac? I got hit by a Frito Lay truck. I got hit by a Frito Lay truck. <laughs> It's Dave Bird's dream. <laughs> that is. I mean, these don't sound terrible to me. Ice yeah. cream falling from a balcony. <laughs> if you want to pick him up and you're out in public, girls, this is how you do it. I would love to drive a Frito Lay truck. Spill a milkshake on him or hit him with a Frito truck. Okay, so what do you think here, Melissa? Do you think this is a little kid or a drunk adult? I'm going to go with drunk adult again. Going to go drunk adult. What do you think, Bird? <sighs> yeah, I think I'm going to go with drunk adult, too. Okay, Virginia? Yeah, I agree. Drunk adult. Okay. I was a drunk adult. Uh, I thought it would be funny to try and jump on the Frito truck as it came towards me, and it hit me instead, and I spent two months in the hospital. Oh, oh dang. my God. Dang. Wow. <laughs> you tried to j jump? You tried to jump movie? on it. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like fun, huh? Dude. Wow. Okay. All right, Melissa, you already got the tickets. We'll play one more for fun here, though. Because we got a uh, dumb story here from Sarah. What did you do, Sarah? I got bit by a raccoon trying to feed it a hot dog from out of my mouth. <laughs> okay, so she had a hot dog in her mouth, and she's like, here, raccoon. That's got to be drunk adult, right? It's got to be. Okay, what do you think, Melissa? Mm, I'm going to go little kid. All right, going against. I yeah, like it. I like, I like that. It. We're going against the team here. <laughs> Okay, well, were you here, Sarah? I was a little kid. Oh. I really loved animals as a kid. And one day I tried to feed a raccoon by putting a hot dog in my mouth. And 
the raccoon and like went berserk and bit me on the lip. Oh my gosh! Bit you wow. on the lip? That's Ooh. horrifying. Hey, you get some shots for that. Well, how how many stitches would you get for a raccoon bite on the lip? Depends how deep the raccoon penetrates you. And is your mm-hmm. lip ever the same? No, probably not. No, what a weird scar that's going to be. Well, uh, you did uh, two out of three there. You did better than the uh, KBJ show. Congratulations, uh, Melissa. Thank you. You've got a bunch of free beer coming your way Saturday. It is the BRK Republic West Palm Beach Beer Festival. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. They do great stuff there. It's really cool when they do the blocking of the 500 block on Clematis. It's such a pretty block now. It's a great block, They have really, I was on it yesterday going, Mm -hmm. dang, this is pretty. Great restaurants all up and down right in that area. It's very cool, very chill, great vibe. Uh, you're going to get uh, the tickets for free. General admission's 40 bucks. It includes 6 p.m. entry and an event souvenir cup. You go VIP. It's 55 bucks, and uh, you'll get a food ticket on top of that. Have fun on Saturday. Okay, Melissa? Thank you, guys. You Aww. are welcome. Okay, we got some confessions here today. People love texting these in to us. They're amusing. You can see the uh, dirt and the weird things people have done throughout their life. 877-979-WRMF. That is our text number here. 877-979-9763. Somebody texted us in. They said, I am a drug dealer. Okay. <laughs> All right. Are you near here? Is there a number attached to that message? <laughs> Are you near the 45th Street area? <laughs> Asking for a friend. I love how that starts off. Uh, so I'm a drug dealer. Yes. <laughs> And they say the amount of my ex-teachers that I now sell to is eye-opening, and it's always awkward AF. I can see that. How about that? Selling drugs to the people who used to educate you. What what, what kind of drugs is he selling? Is it just weed, or is he selling, you know... Bruh, weed is not a drug. Is he selling ecstasy to his 10th grade English teacher? (laughs) Who knows, yeah. (laughs) Crazy, a little Molly right? to get through English. That would be kind of surreal, though, right? Like, yeah, I remember you're like my third grade teacher. Weed would be one thing. You're yeah. like, all right, they're, they're, they're smoking some weed. But if you're selling Molly or your, your, your old history teacher goes, yo, Kev, can you give me a block of cocaine? Something hardcore. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That, would be, that would be odd, man. Uh, somebody texts in. They say, whenever I go out, I always bring treats back for my dog so that he thinks I've been out to get the treats for him. Aww. Look what I brought you, buddy. It's kind of good. Somebody else they're confessing. They say, I got so annoyed at this hipster coffee shop today when I ordered a large coffee and the barista told me that they only serve small or medium. Surely if you only serve two sizes, then it's small or large. Medium can only be when there's a middle option. Small and medium. <laughs> I'm so dumb at it. I'm like, well, I don't get it, Kev. <laughs> I want the large coffee. Sorry, we only have small and medium. No, no, you don't. No. <laughs> Uh, this person confessing, saying, uh, my dad always told me that convertible sports cars were for poor people that couldn't afford four seats and a roof. And I believed that until I went to college. Oh, <laughs> it's yeah, funny. Poor them. They can't afford a roof, more seats. This confession says, my dad gives my four-year-old daughter $20 every time she visits him, but she prefers silver coins. So I trade her evenly for whichever one I have. <laughs> Oh, what a scam. That's a good move. Kidneys to learn. (laughs) Here you go. Here's a nice shiny nickel. This text uh, says, during my residency, I had a teenager in the ER that had cut his scrotum climbing over a fence. Oh. Hey. Did it get the interior or did it just get the skin? I think the skin. Because they say here, I closed the wound with some surgical glue. Then as he stood up, he started screaming. Apparently, I had glued his balls to the side of his leg. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) jeez. Scored the doctor. Uh, That's where they were. They were at the the doctor. It was during my residency. Yeah, they're a doctor in training. That's where they are. They're I'm not... sorry. My friend doesn't listen. Okay. I was listening. I just, I'm not good. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sad thing. I am listening. <laughs> this confession says two weeks ago, I had a sex dream about my dad. Okay. We were in a swimming pool and I was loving it. What? Now I can't even speak to him and he keeps asking me if I'm okay, which is making it more weird and worse because that's what he kept asking me during the sex dream. You can't help what you dream. Let it go. It's not your fault. Have you ever had a dream about the Juicy Daddy? Never about my dad, but you all know about the one with my brother.
We yeah. were in that. Right, yeah. We were in another country. Yeah. We were in a prison. The well, guards made us do things. The thing that's messed up, what I've heard about with your sex dreams, is that actually what it is, you're manifesting the fact that you admire a quality in that person. And for some reason, that's how it appears in your dreams. So it just means that you admire qualities that your dad has, but now all of a sudden you're banging your dad in your dreams. Are that's you, odd. Are you okay? Are you okay? <laughs> Stop asking me that. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Uh, this person said, I started my last toilet paper roll from what I stockpiled during the pandemic. Turns out I hoarded 27 months worth of TP. Wow. That's epic. Remember when people were rushing out the stores and gobbling it all up? They started making those emergency signs at Publix. Only take one roll. Yeah. This person apparently didn't listen. Uh, this person had text in this confession to us. They said, I clogged a friend's toilet with my unexpected diarrhea when I was eight. I told them it was vomit and then ran home in embarrassment. My friend had to plunge it herself. Oh. Last week, she asked me if I remember the time I clogged her toilet with my vomit. My lie is now a triumphant 27 years old. They believed it. They believed it was vomit. I mean, I, I guess you, I mean, the, without getting into details, I'm sure you could make that mistake. Yeah. Okay. I it's mean, you're young kids. Way. Having a, uh, either way, I mean, do you want to unclog a toilet with either? No. No, but vomit yeah. is better than poo. Mm -hmm. It is. I'm not as embarrassed if I am throwing up. But if you have to tell somebody, oh, I got the explosive diarrhea, that's not cool. Mm -hmm. uh, this confession says, my husband started blaring music on Alexa this morning at 5 a.m. while I was sleeping. He was unapologetic. So after he left for work, I told Alexa to set an alarm for 3 a.m. on Saturday morning. I'm going out of town this weekend. <laughs> there you go, sweet revenge. Make it a really embrace, uh, abrasive song. Uh, this person said, I have three cats, and sometimes I pretend to have a heart attack and collapse in a heap on the floor, motionless, just to see how they react. They don't care a bit, ever. Yeah, I, I was listening to stories about how uh, people were breaking into people's houses and they would have a dog, and they always thought the dog was going to protect them, bark, mm -hmm. do something like yeah. that. Someone was getting kidnapped, and they said the dog laid on the ground with the head on the floor just looking at the whole— didn't move, didn't bark, didn't do oh, anything. Oh, wow. But intruders came in their house. Wow. The dog was no help at all. <laughs> That's the ultimate dog test, right? <laughs> yes. And I guess you never know. That's so funny. They assumed it was going to protect, serve, and protect and it did not and uh finally here today it says my husband's drinking started to really annoy me so i added yellow food dye to his shower gel a week later he was convinced he had liver failure gave up drinking and went on a health kick <laughs> okay well there you go <laughs> that is diabolical that is diabolical it's, it's a lot that is a lot <laughs> How to manipulate your husband's behavior. Don't mess with her. She's good. Yes. All right. Uh, thanks for texting those in. You can also check out Fesshole on Twitter. 877-979-WRMF is our number. Ow! There's a lot of dumbass criminals to talk about, baby. It's the Whacked Out News. People breaking the law. Ha-ha, fighting in the nude. Ha, drunk people pooping in the street. Ha-ha, it's the Whacked Out News. So many people are meth. Now, this is probably one of the most Florida stories ever, what you would expect here in our great state. A 58-year-old woman with an open bottle of Jack Daniels whiskey in a bag was arrested for driving a golf cart onto I-95 in Titusville. Is she single? Because I know some guys. Oh, whiskey in a boy. bag? <laughs> whiskey in a bag in a golf cart on I-95 on Saturday night. Did she put it herself in a bag? Or? Yeah. She huh. did. That's, yeah. a, that's a move. A semi-truck driver spotted the woman driving in the golf cart in the center lane of I-95 in Brevard County. Oh, my word. The truck She's driver, lucky she didn't die. Oh, my gosh, yeah. I mean, that's just insane. The truck driver observed her driving in the golf cart, and she was passing out while she was driving. Oh, my word. So the truck driver used her semi to steer the golf cart to the shoulder of I-95. Then once on the shoulder, the truck driver grabbed the keys to the golf cart because the woman was trying to drive away. <laughs> They got Highway Patrol out there, and she's now facing misdemeanor charges of disorderly intoxication in a public place and resisting an officer without violence. <laughs> but that's, I mean, what's that going to get you? Some fines? I doubt any. A DUI? 
Yeah, you're yeah, going to get some DUI good stuff on that. You're no joke. Ten thousand dollar fine to start with. Going to lose your license for a year. Probably other fines, reckless endangerment, all that kind of stuff. They probably make it worse because you were on 95 in a no golf doubt. cart. Yeah. Say, mm. Sustained. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to be good for her. Justin Peters, also known as Redbeard, had been arrested after he stole his roommate's parrot, leading to multiple injuries to the bird. Aww. The red parrot is valued at $1,800, and apparently Redbeard had took the red parrot to a bus stop in Monroe County, but left it sitting on the bench. Witnesses said the red beard and the red bird appeared to be stressed and agitated. <laughs> Both, of them. Both of them stressed and agitated. They were not enjoying each other's company. <laughs> no. So thankfully, the red bird was reunited with its rightful owner. It uh, did have some damages, but is expected to eventually be okay. Red beard, however, was arrested and is now facing charges of grand theft and animal cruelty. What the hell's wrong with Redbeard? <laughs> what is wrong with Redbeard? Yeah. 13 year old boy was on a lobster catching expedition in the Florida Keys with his family when he was bitten by a nurse shark. In yeah. the face. Yeah, in the face, yeah. Oh. That's what's crazy. He had a he had a lobster in his hand and he feels a little tap on the back of his leg. You know, the nurse nurse shark's like, you know, doing hey. that. Hey. Hey, by the way, you got a lobster, I'd like it. <laughs> So he looks behind and here's the shark right in his face and the shark goes and latches right on his face. So the boy grabbed the shark by the face and pulled it off and then started swimming as fast as he could to try to get to the boat screaming to his parents, shark, shark, get me out of the water. His family rushed him back to the shore, drove him to the urgent care where he got 10 stitches on the top of his lip. He says that one day he will get back into the water. It's a badass story. I've that always wanted to get bit by a shark. Right in the face? I'd rather get bit in the butt than the face. Man. I don't think nurse sharks usually bit people. They, they can. They, 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 they bite feet a lot. Oh. Not a lot, but they can happen. Yeah, I think they're just going for food. It's just thinking it's getting ready to get a meal. You know, it's just looking at the lobster be like, that looks tasty. And you know. I agree. Lobster is tasty. Yeah. So. I mean, a lot of shark news in... The uh, is Shark Week coming up because they do have a goal. Week, yeah. It is was, PR was shark agent. Week. Damn it, that's <laughs> why they're promoting that walking shark on land. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they got you. There really is, though. I but I saw the footage, the shark was kind of crawling with its fins. I wouldn't really call it walking. I'm expecting it to be walking and hey, guys, tap it's, dancing. Yeah, it's pretty horrifying, though. It yeah. is. <laughs> Well, Jaybird, you're going to be heading to Southeastern Ohio this weekend for a Bigfoot festival there in Logan. And not far away in Mansfield, Ohio, Suzanne Ferenkak. <laughs> what Ferenc- an unfortunate name. Ferenkak? Ferenkak. <laughs> has claimed that she has a two-minute long recording of a Bigfoot. What do you think? Do you believe? She claims that that is a Bigfoot because she's actually caught a glimpse of a seven and a half foot tall, hairy Bigfoot when it allegedly jumped over a back road southeast of Loudonville in May of 2013. So she's made eye contact and now she says she's got audio recordings of In fact, she says her catalog now has more than 20,000 hours of Bigfoot calls from her backyard. Please tell me she's going to be there. On Saturday. How far is she? Mansfield's not far from Logan. It's kind of in the same wooded area. It's uh, about the same distance from Columbus, about an hour. If there's any kind of goal here, I think you try to hook up with her. And what's your last name again? Farrenkak. Hey, is uh, is Miss Farrenkak here? Yeah. (laughs) I want to talk Bigfoot with her. I don't know if she's going to be at the Bigfoot Festival in Logan this weekend, but she will be at the Pleasant Hill Lake Park in Ohio for the Bigfoot Base Camp weekend, the weekend of September 9th. Okay. So Farron Cack will be there then with her recordings. I would love to talk to Farron Cack. I, I, I want to see what's behind those eyeballs. Get those thoughts. Not to dispel her Bigfoot knowledge and beliefs, but... Apparently, a group of workers at nearby Mohican State Park suggest that this sound is actually an alpha male coyote calling its pack. (laughs) 
doesn't sound very alpha. It's almost kind of like omega. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I guess you hear what you want to hear, huh? Well, an inmate in Kansas managed to punch a hole through a reinforced plastic window by smearing with hemorrhoid cream and lighting the cream on fire to soften the plastic up. Now that is a creative way to break out of jail. Sounds like a MacGyver kind of thing, huh? That is pretty crazy. Huh. Who would have known? Hemorrhoid cream, lighting it on fire, will soften up plastic. Did, Did he not get know. out? Did he escape? Uh, don't believe so. Go so back to the drawing board, but so maybe it's not that good of an idea. Yeah. <laughs> he probably didn't think it was going to work either, and then he was like, "Oh, damn! It worked. What do I do?" What do you know? What do you know? Well, there's a new restaurant in Fort Worth, Texas, that has banned cell phones. They say if somebody needs to reach you, they can bring an old-fashioned phone right to your table, just like restaurants used to do. This place is going to go out of business. They're doing this to get publicity. Yeah. yeah. They, they know uh, all the radio people, oh, you're not going to believe it. There's a restaurant that says you can't have your phone. Well, guess what? I'm not coming. Is your food better be good, too. If you're making me th- go through all these hopes and you got these weird rules, it better be delicious. Mm-hmm. And finally, a world record from a Minnesota woman whose fingernails have a combined length of 42 feet and 10.4 inches. Ew. How do you wipe anything? That's gnarly. How would you wipe? Uh, very carefully. I think you need a spotter. Oh, you gotta rub up against a tree. <laughs> I think you're right. Dude, 40 feet of nails? You gotta just get on the carpet like the family dog and rub your butt across it. I think you're right. I think you gotta do it in the shower. Uh, Her longest nail is her right thumb, which is 4 feet and 6.7 inches. She's been growing her nails for over 25 years. That's how long it takes to get them that long. I mean, something like that. And I love I love my back rubbed and scratched with nails. But is that too much? What I did, Would it just feel... I mean, those things have got to be dirty, too. There's right? no way you can clean them. You, you can't clean all that. You can do your that. best. You can do your best. You can do your best, but even mm. your best couldn't get every nook and cranny. Would, would that feel good? Rub it on your body with those nails? No, I don't think so. I don't know if it would. No, Kevin I think it, wouldn't like it, but you might. I think it'd feel creepy. It's too much, I think. Well, there's not a lot of strength at the end of the tips, I wouldn't think. They just feel odd. You wouldn't have a lot of control. I'd, I'd prefer a shorter, much shorter nail. I think I want, that would feel a lot better. I want to try it, though. Okay. <laughs> I tell you, on the roadways of South Florida, you always have to keep your eyes open, man. It is crazy. I don't know what is going to be going on. Yesterday, on our way to work, my wife had almost got T-boned by a lunch wagon. That thing was flying about 65 miles an hour. Blew right through the red light. We had the right away, And luckily, my wife looked back over, and she's like, that car's going way too fast to stop. And she slammed on the brakes. and She saw it. Missed us by less than a foot. Wow. Yeah, I mean, if, if she would have kept going and hadn't seen it, it would have hit the side of me. And uh, I'd either be dead, probably more likely, or it'd be one of those things where you're going to have a lifetime of pain and probably three years of rehabilitation. Am I the only one that was thinking, what kind of lunch were they, did they have in that truck? It sounds like a taco truck. You were saying taco. Someone else said a sub truck. I, I'm, I'm quite curious. Yeah, look like the ones that'll pull up to maybe, uh, you know, work sites, and it's got uh, kind of the silver lining, and it has the the handles that kind of almost like the side of uh, like you would see a, a cooler truck that have ice cream, and you pull the handle out, and so it looked like it'd be an insulated type of truck. So you see them at construction sites. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was yeah. that kind of truck. Yeah, it was it was mo- I didn't know those things even go that fast. The thing was flying. I bet you they were running late. Yeah, probably. Yeah, something like that. Just, uh, I guess they mm. don't care if the light's red. Or they just stole the food truck. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. who knows? So there's just always something. And you just never even know where. You know, I was uh, kind of driving right out of my neighborhood. And it's a pretty quiet little area, you know, where I live. It's pretty calm. It's a lot of apartment communities and whatnot. You know, it's not the uber high end, but, you know, it's 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 nice. It's manicured. It looks good. And there was this uh, woman that was just on the sidewalk, and I saw her, like, waving to a car that was going by, and I was like, that's odd. It must be somebody she knows, so I didn't think much of it. This is this is on that road by your house? Yeah. That kind of road? Yeah, it's right by, uh, if you know where Village Boulevard is, I'm on a side street, and she's standing there on Village Boulevard, and those cars will go 45, 50 miles okay, an hour. Okay, you're on Village, by, gotcha. Yeah. So what time of day was it? it? This was about 3 in the afternoon. Okay. Yeah, so you don't think much of it. It's a sunny day, 3 in the afternoon, she's just waving to the 
car going by, and I was like, all right, I guess she knows him. Didn't think much of it. He's getting ready to take a right-hand turn, and she turns around, and immediately, you ever just see crazy eyes? Oh, do I? Yes. <laughs> I turn around and look, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. And I had to do a double take, because I'm like, oh, wow. It's going down. There is something going on with this woman. I don't know what it is. You don't know if it's crazy, if it's drugs, if it's both. It could be. But something is going on. She is going through something in a weird manic state. And now that same odd wave she had to the car going by, she's now doing to me. <laughs> Except I'm about maybe two or three feet away from her. And I'm like, eh. and she's like, ah. and she starts talking. And I'm like, I don't know what this is. I'm like, I got nothing. I can't do it. Your window's she, up, right? It is. Okay. My son's in the back seat, And that's where I get a little bit, you know. Squirrely. I, yeah. 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 And she then starts knocking on the window. I'm like, uh -uh. I'm like, I'm not sorry. I don't care what you're going through. I don't know what's happening, but I'm not the one. I'm not the one. <laughs> I, I just there's nothing that I really can give you for what you need right now. <laughs> Is it possible she's a big Kevin Ralston fan? <laughs> I think she she's needs a, fan a psych of, evaluation. I, I, she's a fan of anyone because she's not just waving at me. She's waving at anybody else. And then she goes for the door handle. Oh, And boy. I looked to make sure it was locked. And she's ju 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 And boom, there I went. And she wouldn't let go. And she, I think it knocked her down. I think she had dragged her a bit. And I was like, I, I, I felt like, okay, I don't know what to do in this situation. I felt a little bit bad because I looked back and she's all over the place. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm like, I wish I could have handled this better. I don't know how I should have handled it. Wait, your door was locked, though, right? She wasn't opening the door. No, but she it's a handle. She was trying, she's trying, trying to. Onto, and as she's holding on to it, I just, at that point, I'm you like. You gunned it. I don't know what's going on, because she has, you don't know, man, sometimes that meth strength. Right. I didn't know if she was going to move right back to my son's window next and hit or anything like that. I just, immediately, you're thinking of worst case scenario, and you're just like, our engagement here is not going to go well. Like this, is likely not going to go really well for me. I'm responsible for this kid in the back seat, and I just got to get ourselves out of here. I'm not an expert to deal with what you're going through. You are going through something. I don't know yeah. what it is. Even worse than meth strength, it would be PCP strength. You never I, even I know. Don't, you don't know. That's just it. You don't know. I, I hate to be callous to the human condition and what somebody's going through. But unfortunately, there's just so many stories of somebody that tries to accommodate and it doesn't go well for them. And look, maybe if we had distance and I didn't have a child with me, then we could have had a different arrangement and I could have possibly helped you somehow. You, if you were on Village Boulevard, Village Boulevard's nice, but it's connected to 45th Street. And 45th mm -hmm. Street has got a lot of activity that you don't want to deal with because there, there, there's a lot of, there's a lot going on there and that can bleed into that area it, it used to a lot where i lived at yeah so i don't know would you guys have gunned it when she's going for the door yes at that point of would course. a majority of people okay at that point I you, just, you just gotta gun it right how do you know she don't have a gun on her you gotta get out of there there was honestly for a split second i was like well roll down see what she's got to say Maybe you can weasel some money out the window. But then I started thinking, I had that happen before where I tried to give somebody money and they grabbed my arm really hard. And I was like, never again am I going to do that. And you, they tried to rip me out of the car. And that's where I'm like, all right. Uh, you know, un unfortunately, like I said, I hate to, you have to callous yourself for those situations. But you got to realize a lot of those people may not be. In the same mindset you're in. You ro you roll down the window. She goes, oh, my gosh. The Kevin Ross. I love the bit. Think fast. Does she want to say hello? Maybe that's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> Your hair, club hair looks great. Yeah. Maybe that's all it was. I don't know. She'd be like, oh, gosh, what a jerk. I just want to compliment his hair. <laughs> She's going to go on Facebook or social media and go, Kevin's a jerk. I try to take a picture with right. him. Yeah. That's it. I'm giving you one star review. Yeah. It could be. <laughs> I would have done the same thing. Look, you can't be grabbing somebody's door. All three of us have had that happen, by the way. Yeah. All in the same same area it is scary lot, yeah. when it happens you just got to get out of there and i think you did the right thing well it okay. makes you kind of squirrely we get especially in the morning we get here and we got to be at red lights at times if you had somebody try to open your car you're going to be a little changed after that and yeah. there's times where mm -hmm. i see someone walking by my car i kind of get like oh do yeah. i run the red light real quick <laughs> Okay, you know you live in South Florida when? We got a lot of interesting things here in South Florida that not a lot of other places ever have to deal with. In fact, you hear our whacked out news and you're like, okay, yeah, 
It's a South Florida kind of story. We've got Florida man stories. It's a whole category that they have online, the Florida man stories. You know you're in South Florida when you see somebody pooping on the side of the road. <laughs> I, I've seen it three different times. I even have a video on YouTube, Virginia. Okay. All right. <laughs> Anybody we know. Mm-hmm. No, it was some, some dude from uh, the Broward area. <laughs> We asked the question on the KBJ Show Facebook page, you know you live in South Florida when, and Sarah said, you are no longer shocked by Florida man stories. In fact, you've witnessed a few. Uh, That's just pretty much it. Yeah, we've we've all seen probably a few of those stories that wind up in the whacked out news. In fact, uh, one today, Lee said, yes, a drunk woman with Jack Daniels in her hand starts driving a golf cart down the center lane of I-95. Yes. You know you're in South Florida when. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Megan said, you know you're in South Florida when you think a guy's daughter is his girlfriend. (laughs) <laughs> mm-hmm. See that a lot. <laughs> Shelly said, you know, you're in South Florida when a beware of alligators may be present sign doesn't bother you anymore. I guess that probably was startling to me 23 years ago. You're right. Now I don't think too much about it. Marie said, when you have to knock on the mailbox before you open it, because you never know what's living in there. <laughs> a lizard. There really is. Anytime I'm walking anywhere, I'm kind of shaking my leg or the bushes. You'd be like, whatever might be in here, just to let you know I'm coming in. You're lucky if it's a lizard. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, Nate said, you know you live in South Florida when you had to swerve to avoid hitting an iguana. Oh, my gosh. It is horrifying when you hit one, because I did. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Here we go, Kev. I felt so bad. Mm -hmm. Taking a turn on Depression Highway. All right. Let's (laughs) let's hear a sad story, Virginia. A lot of iguanas on Depression Highway. I nailed that sucker. I was going fast, and he was going slow. Yeah, just... I looked back in the rear view. He was twitching. Oh, Oh, good gosh. (laughs) I felt bad. We didn't need the twitch. We did not need the twitch detail. I didn't need the twitch detail. If I had to go through it, you have to go through it. This is my therapy. Son of a twitch. I did not need to hear that. (laughs) Yeah, that definitely made it a lot tougher. No doubt. Uh, Let me see. You know that you live in South Florida when... You blow your horn, and two seconds later, uh, oh, you blow your horn two seconds after the light turns green, is what James said. You know you live in South Florida when New Yorkers are telling you how much better New York is as they're in Florida. Yeah, (laughs) it's true. Uh, Savina said, you know you're in South Florida when people use their flashers during a rainstorm. Yes. I believe that's no longer illegal now, right? Yeah, you can do it. Yeah. Uh, Kelly said, you know, you're in South Florida when old people are driving 25 miles an hour and young people are driving 80 at the same time. (laughs) That's really what makes the road so crazy is you've got people with driving styles from everywhere. You got New York, Ontario, your native Floridians, people from the Midwest. You got Hispanics. You just don't even know. It's crazy. They throw a Bahamian on the road. They're on the wrong side. (laughs) They're honking at you because it's positive, not negative. Frankie said, you know you live in South Florida when it's raining in the front yard and sunny in the back. That happens a lot. Mm-hmm. It's kind of cool. I still get I get giddy about it. It, it makes me want to go outside and play in it. You, you play, witchy. Play in <laughs> yeah, the rain. Get on that fun. broom and fly around the yeah. rain. I'm going to fly to your house and mess with you. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> Vicky said, you know you live in South Florida when it's 70 degrees outside and you've got a jacket on with flip-flops. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. You're right. Cause everyone always asks, why are you dressed so for the winter, bird? This whole wing is freezing in this building. It's freezing. August is the coldest month in Florida. <laughs> it is. It is. That's crazy. Uh, you know, you live in South Florida when there are dogs in strollers at the mall, Karen says. So many. Mm hmm. Brenda said, you know, you live in South Florida when you know what a silver alert means. That means we got an old person with dementia, likely, that is on the streets, and they don't know where they are. You know you live in South Florida when you find drugs on the beach. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Does that happen along the whole coast or just South Florida? Uh, The story that we had the other day was from the Florida Keys. Uh, I'm trying to think. I think they've had Jacksonville. I think I remember a drug on the beach story from there, but it's mainly south. It's usually a South Florida kind of thing, like Palm Beach down. Uh, Scott said, you know you live in South Florida when you are eating a pub sub. That's true. There's, public sub. There's big news about public subs. Yeah, real big news. I don't know if Kevin wants to save that announcement. No, let's do it. <laughs> let's do They're it. They're doing like a Willy Wonka thing where you can win public subs for a year. Free subs yeah, for a year? Just Google it and all the information will come up. Oh, yeah. my gosh. I, I thought that was a, I, that's a, a big deal. That yeah, is. The uh, public sub is turning 30 this year. So to celebrate, the, they're giving away free pub subs for a year. That would be two pub subs per week. 
Okay. Is how it breaks down. That's the limit of what you get. You still feel it, Bird? Here's all, here's all the guidelines. <laughs> here's all the guidelines. He wanted one every day. It takes a little bit of the wind out of the it's old two sail. Two a week. <laughs> two a week. Yeah, I mean, it's probably six inches. Oh, really? A six inch? Probably what am I, a six inch. What am I, five years old over here? I assume that's probably somewhere in the five front, I would no, guess. No, it's got to be a foot long. I don't know. I think, personally, I think it should be one sub per day. <laughs> I know. I get it. But yeah. that's, that's, that's When you how, said that to me, I was like, let's go read some fine print right now. I, I was so blinded by the idea. I started reading them. He, did, he lost his mind, and he said it to me, and I only went through, like, the first line. I'm like, oh, bird, it's not as good as you think. Kevin is such a fine print guy. I, and you should be, because then you get disappointed you if you're not. you get the reality of the situation. I want, I want the reality. Half a sub? I mean, hey, two pub subs a week for a year, that's better than none. It is. But it's, you know, is I, it the game-changing end-all, be-all? I'm not trying to be a jerk, but it ain't, it ain't hitting as hard as I thought it was. Uh, they do have some other prizes, too, like Publix gift cards and 90s swag, going back to when the Pub Sub was born was in the 90s, so they're playing off of that. If you'd like to sign up for free Pub Subs for a year, just go to the Publix Facebook page by August 18th. That is uh, where you do it. Do you think... Actors and actresses are doing more or less nude scenes than they used to. You see more nudity in your programming now because think of all the TV shows and those long series that are out there, like a Game of Thrones, and you see lots of nudity. Oh. Graphic sex scenes in a lot of these things. Game of Thrones got, like, really raunchy, right? I, mean, I wouldn't say raunchy. It's kind of a harsh critique. Uh, I thought it was, you know... <laughs> artistically done well but yeah it was uh it was, it was pretty intense at times when and you got a lot of stars kind of like you know the girl who plays the queen of dragons on there she did some nude scenes early on in game of thrones and she's like all right i, I got that out of the way i'm not doing any more nude scenes in my life so she's uh, over it and a lot of these stars that's kind of it it was pretty much in the first three to five years of their film careers that they wound up doing their nude scenes and then as they get a little bit more established they're like nah see we don't have goods. to yeah, we don't have to and not to mention the rate's gone way up now exactly but if I you mean, want to see the goodies it's it's a move they do to get a little bit further in their career yeah so we have a uh, christy on here from lantana play naked or not We'll see how well she can do here. If uh, she can get to uh, three correct, then we'll hook her up with tickets to the BRK Republic West Palm Beach Beer Festival on Saturday. Hello, Christy. Hey, KBJ. Yeah. How you hey. doing? Good morning. Good morning. All right, she's fired up. Let's see how she does here. We can get some help from uh, Virginia and Jaybird here to help you figure this out naked or not julia roberts has she ever done a nude scene in a movie christy no i'm gonna say no what do you think about that virginia you think she has i don't think she has she is not no she's not no i know that for a fact okay <laughs> he's done the research <laughs> what do you think about with angelina jolie <laughs> That is correct, yeah. She did several. It was kind of in the late 90s that uh, she was doing that. But uh, movies like Hackers, Hell's Kitchen, and Pushing 10, she all did some uh, nude scenes in that. And uh, now she's a mom. Of course, she's not going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> what about uh, Jennifer Lawrence? J-Law. I'm um, going to say no. Did J-Law show off her hoo-ha? <laughs> Uh -huh. What do you think, Burr? Did she? I think J Law did show. Yeah, she 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 showed some goodies. Okay, yeah, she uh, did. That's what it says here, oh. Red Sparrow did a little bit of nudity in that one. This is not the podcast, Bird. You can't say that. <laughs> okay. We know what you were thinking. <laughs> I have to censor myself. <laughs> okay, you're you're good so far. You got uh, two out of three. What do you think about with Megan Fox, Christy? Has she appeared nude in a scene in a movie? I'm going to say yes. What do you think, Virginia? I would say yes, too. I would as well, but it says no. no. It says Megan Fox has never shown up the goods. Yeah. How about that? So what happens if you're raising the pizzle? Grow up wholesome. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, right. <laughs> the, 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 I've yeah, seen, Lucy has nothing to do with I see a lot of pizzle boobs, Kev. Okay. <laughs>
<laughs> and that's just this week. Yeah. <laughs> and that was just from our, our put him on the glass segment. <laughs> okay, let's try one more for the win here, Christy. What about Penelope Cruz? Has she ever done a nude scene or appeared naked in a movie? I'm going to say yes. That one is correct, yes. Yay. Penelope yes. Cruz has done nudity, and that means you are a winner, and you're going to the BRK Republic West Palm Beach Beer Fest on Saturday on the 500 block of Clematis. Okay, yeah. Christy? Awesome. Have fun, okay? Thank you. Have a great day, guys. Okay. You too. Enjoy that beer fest. That thing sounds fun. Oh, she would be fun to drink with. Uh, I think she would just be a lot of fun. Yeah. Free beer sampling from over 15 local breweries. Ooh. Yeah. We haven't done one of those in a minute, man. I would love to go to one of those. Well, you should go on Saturday. Uh, I got Logan. big plans. <laughs> oh, that's right. Going to be in Logan. You'll be in Kevin's hometown for the Bigfoot Festival. I'll be drinking beer in another state. <laughs> yeah, you will. That's right, you will. I always love when we have Tyler Cameron in studio. I know Virginia especially loves when Tyler Cameron's in studio. Uh, well, he's just so pretty to look at. Uh, it, all morning <laughs> long. It's just, oh my gosh, I got to make sure I look good for time. <laughs> she missed like her whole segment. She does the dirt of the day and it's like a the dirt's rolling. I'm like, where's Virginia? She's I had to ba- curl my hair. You, you, you look like amazing, Virginia. Oh, uh, don't you. even. Don't. And she looked beautiful last night. I had dinner with oh, her last night. We geez. did. Do that, do that sexy thing you were doing with your voice. You were, she was doing this whole sexy thing <laughs> with her voice that we wanted. Your, you're gonna come and do it for her. That's the voice that made me fall in love in like fourth grade. <laughs> <laughs> the voice of Gollum. <laughs> I, I was tell, I met her daughter last night. I was like, you don't understand how cool your mom is. Like when I've met some great people like since you know being in the industry oh, yeah? now. Yeah. Got to be mm-hmm. around cool people, and one of the most people who put me in awe of meeting was Virginia because I grew up wa- listening to y'all on my way to school every morning. Oh, I was boy. like, I love her voice. I love her. I had no Aww. idea who Virginia like looked like or yeah. what she was. You know, I was like, I just had this whole imagination of her. She's mm-hmm. just as beautiful as I thought. Oh, yeah, I mean, me and Kevin, we were, te- we, so me and Kevin were, <laughs> were we not texting last night, Kevin, yeah, about we how were. lucky we are, yeah. how beautiful Virginia is, yeah. the sweet yeah, sounds I, of... I, we were. I was like, 23 years, I don't know how I have maintained... You know, decorum around her because you're right. There's just something about you get in the room with Virginia. And I just... mean, Virginia, your back's got to be heavy, I and mean, your voice has carried the show oh, for 23 oh, yeah. years. You know, I mean, there's, yeah. there's times we when... said that too. I was like, going, dude, I'm like, she's yeah. carrying the show, the beauty, everything. I'm she's not, got it all. I'm not kidding. There's times she says some zingers on the air, my, my heart flutters. Yeah, yeah. The, the things she says, I've had that, that since fourth grade, guys. We were thinking about making the K and the J lowercase and having the V be uppercase. Oh, yeah. Oh, I like and that. And in the middle, maybe. Yeah. 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 Right. It is in the middle already. Yeah. yeah. Just and take it. Just take it over. You gotta see this girl twerk. It oh. is sexy. <laughs> So, Tyler Cameron, if you haven't uh, followed along, to me, what I'm most impressed with is you play college football. That's That, to me, is a, you're an FAU fight now, you know, all yeah. that kind of good stuff. And so you went on, but uh, the ladies seem to care. My wife and daughter, they care more about that. You're on the, the bachelorette and mm-hmm. all that kind of good <laughs> yeah. stuff. And, yeah, but uh, you've done some good stuff. And uh, you were living in New York, but you're in Jupiter a lot. So where are you mixing your time up and where do you stay? What is what is home for you? Yeah, I mean, home will always be Jupiter. Jupiter okay. is a place where I want to, you know, plant my roots, be yeah. here. I want to build a construction company. I want to build a legacy here. I want to, mm-hmm. like, my goal in life is at 40 years old, I want to be able to say I'm good with everything and just coach high school football and help kids go to college. Like, oh, that's awesome. I want to, like, for you, I want to be a part of this community. And uh, I'll go to New York because I love it. I love the energy. Yeah. And, like, I have a place there, so I'll bounce around for, you know, jobs and stuff like that up there. But really, this is where I want to be home, and this is where I want to make an impact. So. And we got Virginia. And we got Virginia here. Yeah, <laughs> she's, my, she's my Jupiter neighbor, they don't so have that, kind that of helps. On, they don't have that kind of voice on New York City radio. No. There's no. some people that chat with that they were being serious. <laughs> we okay, were texting last night. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler made me a rock star last night because he was so nice to Magnolia, uh-huh. and my daughter was just, like, over the moon. And, you know, if you look cool in front of your kid, that makes sure. your day. Yeah. Thank yeah, you for being so sweet to her. Well, She's got to know her mom's legendary, you know. <laughs> what, did, what did Magnolia say to you? Mom, I think I'm in love. <laughs> oh, man. Well, Magnolia's going to have no problem finding love. She's a beautiful, sweet girl. Oh, so. thanks. Mm.
Uh, so we got to talk. Uh, Tyler Cameron is here in studio with us, and uh, the shirt that you have on is fantastic. It's leopard print. That. It's that got. I mean, that's nice. a great. I had to come in, kind of shirt. <laughs> come in with some energy with it's y'all this good. morning. It's know? great. Where, where did you get that? Shirt. Where's that from? A little Duvin action. A little Duvin. Duvin. Action. Duvin. Okay. It's a fun little surf company. Golf okay. Company. Okay. Yeah. That's a great. That is. A, that's phenomenal. Yeah. That's next level. Now, how are you doing with uh, three natives? I know that you were uh, back in them. You're doing some franchises with yeah. them. Yeah, we got two stores right now. Um, we're looking to get to number three. You know, with me uh-huh. and my group that's doing it. Uh, but it's awesome, man. And yeah. it's a good community. People love it. Uh, mm-hmm. and we're just having fun with it. My buddy JP and I are running it up and having fun. We got a store in Boca. We got a store here in Abacoa. It's great. And it's yeah. been awesome. That's great. Is JP the guy you brought in last time? Yeah. Okay. Surfer dude. Yeah. And yeah. you guys are high school or childhood friends, right? Yeah. We, 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 uh, he was a quarterback at Palm Beach Gardens. I was a quarterback at Jupiter. So oh, we that's awesome. Together. Okay. We had the same yeah. QB coach. And, Aww. You know, and we, you know, went through a lot together, and that's my guy, and just mm-hmm. we're doing it together. It's fun. Who's your QB coach? Eric Cresser. So he's, he's the man, dude. That he was there when I was going to I know. Gardens. The guy, the guy is a cockroach. You can't get rid of him. You know? was, I'm not kidding you. He was he was uh, doing football stuff with Gardens when I graduated. He's he's the guy. In fact, I'm trying to get Cannon some QB lessons, and somebody gave he's, me his he's number. He's, he, he won't he won't take me back. Cannon? He's got a. I know. Yeah, he's ready to play quarterback. No, <laughs> you know? no right? Tell Cresser to text me. Cresser's got a brother too. Yeah, right? Jason. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. He's the head coach at Benjamin now. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah. and he's got a great program rolling there. Like he's he's doing. It, man, it's, it's exciting. Well, I to watch. hear he coaches up the best quarterbacks, and then they just coincidentally go play football for him. Yeah, it's kind of a good, yeah, yeah. Yeah, smart move. Gosh, I want to throw the pigskin around right now. I mean, so bad. Yeah. Like when I was coming out, he's had like seven of the last. He's probably had every quarterback that's come out of Palm Beach County go to Division One has gone through him. He's the man. You know? Yeah, so he's the man. He's the best there is. And there you go. And look at you. Yeah. Just here. When you fail, he's going to the Bachelorette. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to get JP on there. He was he's actually actually about to go on the show. And then they kicked him off last minute because they were like, ah, oh, you're too young. Like, he was literally in the hotel, quit oh, his job, really? getting ready to leave to go on the limo. Oh. And they're like, no, nope, you got to go home. You're too young for Claire, who was like 40, and he's 26, so it makes sense. Okay. Are you, are you still plugged into that? Because my wife and daughter are really into this I haven't season. I haven't watched. Yeah. Any, I haven't watched anything since really Matt's season a few years ago. Just, okay. I'm just too busy. Yeah. Yeah, you got a lot going on. Yeah. And what you're doing here is is really awesome. Now, uh, Virginia was friends with your mom, and uh, she has passed, and you're doing what every good son should be doing. You are doing a scholarship in memory yep. of your mom, putting it together, and you're going to be hosting a gala in Jupiter in September. Mm-hmm. What can people do to get involved with that? Yeah, so um, we have this gala going on. September 22nd uh, is the gala at Jupiter Pelican Club, and then mm-hmm. 23rd we're playing golf at the Palm Beach Part 3. They're both just going to be a jam. It's going to be fun, oh, cool. drinks, mm-hmm. you know, good times, but giving back and learning more about my mom and the mom she was for us, but also the mom she was for the community. She took care of everybody. And so we started the scholarship fund because she is a way for her to be a mom still to other kids. Aww. That is very cool. Yeah. I love that. So every every oh, ticket yeah. you purchase helps us pay for a kid to go to school. You know, he's and, got the hair. He's got he's gorgeous. He's got a great oh. shirt. He does things for his mom. And <laughs> look at, I mean, look at Virginia's ever start about to start oh, crying. I'm had, not the only one. Okay, gosh. every girl listening is like, oh. what a dream boat. She is having urges she hasn't had in quite a long <laughs> time. Get out of here. <laughs> I could be his mother. Stop. He's starting to wake up, Cam. Stop. Oh, oh, morning long. Oh, my gosh, Tyler. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the, I'm the Cam, I'm going to miss the dirt all day long. I got to fix my hair. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Virginia's happily married, guys. There's nothing I, I am. am. No, no, no. I am. I'm not going to try to, I'm gonna stop, try to look beautiful for you, though. <laughs> if people want to get involved, how could they connect? So, so I have a link on my Instagram bio right now. When you click that okay. link, you can buy tickets. You can sponsor the event. Um, you can DM us if you want to try and volunteer as well mm-hmm. so we need all the help we can get but um buying tickets trying to fill seats okay um it's gonna be like i said it's gonna be a rocking night we're gonna have a ton of fun there'll be a ton of other celebrity guests there yeah so you know you guys would love to have y'all yep. everyone yeah everyone listening would love to have you guys and mm-hmm. let's just have fun and let's make a difference together yeah part three that's a kevin ralston kind of that's just that is my that, kind of speed that's yeah. just your game yeah that shows my guy i look great on part threes he's good at part threes <laughs> yeah i am part fives not least, so yeah, good yeah it's, it's far <laughs> that's right. good. Kevin, it'll be good for you yeah seriously yeah. i right, come out and play yeah let's do no it doubt. No doubt. Well, I know you got a lot of big uh, projects coming up. We want to have you in studio whenever you got new news to tell us. I'll be back for sure. Yeah, nice. Tyler Cameron. Nice appreciate you, man. Thank oh, you, guys. And he's going to be in the oyster eating contest oh. on oh. Friday. I almost forgot. At Lucky Shuck, they're doing the oyster eating contest uh, Friday at 6 p.m. He's he, he's going against you? Yes. We're you know competing. what they say about oysters, though? They're a little aphrodisiac. Oh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to eat a ton of them. Don't tell mama. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm going oh, crazy afterwards. Cam, I think it's the oysters. I'm starting. I think I'm blushing. I got these urges, Cam. I got, <laughs> Mama's got stirrings for Tyler Cameron. Thanks for coming oh, in, bud. Bad.